Which 1980s bad boy made a daring escape from prison and later had his freedom negotiated by a former Beatle? This is just one of the questions that gets answered on the newest season of Badlands, a true crime podcast about the famous at their most infamous. Listen to Badlands wherever you get your podcasts or binge the entire new season only on Amazon Music. This week in Wellington, Kansas, a roaming party throughout the town ends up in tragedy as some people end up hungover, but one ends up without a head. Welcome to Small Town Murder. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Small Town Murder. Yay! Oh, yay indeed, Jimmy. Yay indeed. My name is James Petrogallo. I'm here with my co-host, I'm Jimmy Wisman. Thank you, folks, so much for joining us on another crazy, God, they get crazier every week, edition yeah. of Small Town Murder. That's a, which we have Small Town Murder Express. This one should be called, My God, It Gets Crazier Every Week, Small Town Murder. <laughs> it's a long name to search for, but might help. <laughs> Thank you so a lot much. Of keywords. It's a lot. To, well, that's that might be good. You're throwing it, helpful. casting yeah. a wide net. So thank you very, very much. Uh, thank you for all you've done for us. Whatever you're listening on, give us five stars. It does help out a lot like that. Uh, head over to shutupandgivememurder.com for everything crime and sports and small town murder related. Yeah. And if you haven't listened to crime and sports, you're missing out. Go check out crime and sports. We promise you it's very funny and you don't have to like sports there. It's crusty. You should trust us by now. Go check it out. Yeah. There's find out all about crustiness. So check all that out. And also get your tickets to live shows because they are on there. Next up is new Orleans in July. Uh -huh. Get uh -huh. your tickets right now to that. Some tickets there. I know Atlanta sold out, but keep right. checking back because people can return their tickets. So you never know. Mm -hmm. A couple might pop up, but definitely New Orleans. Go there. We're and coming see to us. your swamp. Yeah, we're coming to New Orleans in July. Please show up. That's what we're saying. It's going to be hot and unpleasant for us as well. So <laughs> yeah. let's all share in it. We'll all stink together. Let's do it. Yeah. We're all going to be humid and stinky together. It's going to be yeah. a lot of fun. So check that out. Shut up and give me murder dot com. Patreon dot com slash crime and sports is where you get all of your bonus materials. Mm -hmm. Of course, every, you get small town murder express every Friday for right. free. Everybody in the world gets that if you want it. Uh, they're not uh, everybody in the world isn't listening to it, but. It's available. They all have the opportunity. But this you'll only get if you go to patreon.com slash crime and sports. Anybody $5 or above gets access to all the bonus material, everything mm -hmm. for crime and sports and small town murder. This week you're going to get, oh boy, these are fun. We have, first of all, for crime and sports, you definitely don't have to be a sports fan for this. A major league baseball pitcher pitches a perfect game just tripping balls on acid. You, you don't need a. <laughs> That's just fun. You don't have to yeah. like sports. It's a good time. We'll talk all about that. And that was in the 70s, too. So picture like a big afro sticking out of his hat and everything. Yeah. Like that's more. It makes it way more fun. And then for Small Town Murder, we are going to talk about what comes out of John Wayne Gacy's mouth, basically. Oh, here. Uh, boy, is it a lot. We're going to talk a bit about conversations with a killer, the John Wayne Gacy tapes, the documentary, and then also a bunch more that he said in much more detail from his lawyer's book. So stuff he told his lawyer directly and Wow, is it cuckoo yeah. bananas? We'll talk about all of that. Patreon.com slash crime and sports, and you will get a shout out at the end of the yeah. show. Uh, Jimmy will mispronounce your name while concentrating hard to get it correct. So that said, time for hyper focused. Hyper focused. Time for the disclaimer. It's a comedy show. It's yeah. what it is. What the, the show, yeah. the stories are real 100%. Mm -hmm. uh, Dateline couldn't be more real than, you know, whatever. Uh, whatever documentarian uh, investigation discovery couldn't be more real. Everything is by the book. Uh, the only thing is, it's they're crazy stories. So the right. jokes have to be made. They have to it almost, mm -hmm. it would be weird not to. You know what I mean? Inside, yeah. you're thinking it. Uh, <laughs> but what we do not do, what we go out of our way not to do, is we don't make fun of the victims or the victims' families ever. What is that? Because we're assholes. But! But we're not scumbags. That's how that works. That's so, the yeah. deal. I mean, good God. Let's be real yeah. here. So if that sounds good to you, we are going to have one hell of a weird time. If right. you think true crime and comedy should never, ever go together, I don't know. Maybe the show's not for you. Either way, you've been warned. But so uh, no complaining later. But I think you might like it. Either way, if you don't, I don't know. Have a good one. <laughs> I don't really care. The unsubscribe button's there. It's easy to do. But uh, for everybody else who wants to have a good time and hear some crazy, crazy stuff, I think it's time mm -hmm. to clear the lungs here, wherever yeah. you are, in your car. 
with the windows closed or open, middle of your office, everywhere but probably an airplane or a A school would probably be good for this. Sit back and shout, (laughs) shut Shut up up and give give me me murder. murder. (laughs) Let's do this, Jimmy. Okay. Let's go on a trip, shall we? Well, I, I, you know... Let's I can use off. it. Yeah, yeah, let's take back off again here. We are headed, oh boy, it's the headed to the flatlands. If you're oh. not from the United States, this is one of the square states or rectangles in the very center of the country here that you go, mm-hmm. what's what goes on there? Uh, not much is the answer. Uh, we're going to Wellington, Kansas. Oh, they yes. tried to highfalutin this place. Absolutely. So Kansas, Wellington. again, if you're not from the United States, that would be yeah. where Dorothy is from in The Wizard of right. Oz. So that's... Yes. Yeah, uh, there you go. She wanted to flee even to a strange world. Just get out of here. So Tried to make this uh, a flat something in in England? Is that what that's about, the Wellington shit? It's, uh, well, we'll find out. Yeah, it's definitely yeah. named after an English source here. Don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> it's named after the the beef dish is what it's named after. That's, it's not, <laughs> not the actual namesake of the beef dish, but just the beef dish. <laughs> no. It's in south-central Kansas. Uh, mm-hmm. About about forty minutes to Wichita, and mm-hmm. uh, two and a half hours to Topeka. So I mean, this Yikes. is when you're thinking, well, how far are we from Topeka? You're in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> That's what that means. <laughs> and you're looking forward to yeah. the stop in Topeka. Well, we're gonna have to stop there. I guess maybe they'll in have restaurants. Three fucking hours. <laughs> we can pee in Topeka, kids. Shut up. <laughs> you turn down my Gatorade bottle. I don't want to hear you bitching. So it's about four and a half hours to Oakley, Kansas, which was our last Kansas episode, episode no two, 221, way back there, oh, over, over 50 episodes ago. That episode was called Hitchhikers, Drifters, and Necrophiliacs. <laughs> so maybe revisit that one because that sounds insane and fun. Gross. <laughs> and gross. This is in Sumner County, area code 620, so much like Arizona, 602, but this is 620. Right. Motto here, wheat capital of the world. Is that right? Wheat Wait, capital. Wheat. Wheat. <laughs> wheat. Okay, not the weed capital. Wheat <laughs> yeah. capital of the world. That yes. sounds boring. That's right. It's, or this is where all your allergies come from here. Every, right. Everyone out there is gluten intolerant or whatever the shit. This is, <laughs> we're making this it is, all here. This <laughs> is who did it. Yeah. So uh, the history of this town. <laughs> Their other motto is fuck Ukraine because that's, a, I guess, their uh, competitor. Yeah. Isn't I, that what the. I suppose. Ukraine makes a bunch of wheat, yeah, right? A lot of people, well, they don't make it really. They grow it, but a lot grow of people, it, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Produce the grain. We want wheat. Uh, I, 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 we can't. I'm sorry. It just, I it won't work in the dish. Faster. <laughs> it just is. Nothing's happening. We don't know what to do. We have dirt outside. Plenty of it. I don't want to have dirt. <laughs> Screaming. I don't know. I don't I have no other ideas. <laughs> so no, this place here. It was platted in 1871, named mm-hmm. after the Duke of Wellington. Really? What, what who, possible who relation <laughs> could the Duke of Wellington have to the middle of nowhere, Kansas? I, I'd love to know that. What What an honor. <laughs> what, why would he care about that? And why would they care about him? It, it goes both ways, you know? <laughs> Some flat shit with Man. wheat growing in it. Is, what an honor. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no shit. It was designated the Sumner County seat in 1872. As we know, I'm sure someone died over that. There was people yeah, burned yeah. each other out or something. <laughs> Cattle herders would come up the Chisholm Trail, and that helped build the early town's economy. Cattle okay. herders coming up here. In 1892, now the town's only been up for 20 years, all right? Yeah. But it's going well. There's 12,000 people here at this point in time. Sure. It's steadily growing. Uh, there's... You know, they have like a, a big town going on here, mm-hmm. like a big town. And then, and they don't know because at the time they couldn't measure, but from the damage it did, they've estimated an F4 tornado came through at that oh, point. My. That's not a new phenomenon. It's not like, no. you know, that's, <laughs> tornadoes didn't start coming when people filled the place up. It's, oh, well, they were always there. <laughs> It's literally the plot of the movie. It's the That's it. main plot. <laughs> there they are, my friend. Um, this destroyed a hundred homes, a shitload of businesses, killed twelve townspeople. Wow! Uh, did extensive damage to a twenty-six area block, a twenty-six block area. area. So yeah. just, I mean, decimated the whole town basically. Jesus! Ripped it apart. Uh, a bunch of people were hurt as well. 
And um, the tornado completely stopped any growth momentum that it had. Everyone was like, that was <laughs> terrifying. What the hell are we doing here? And then Did they, y'all see that? I saw it. <laughs> yeah. They fled back east, scared yeah. shitless, or went, there's an ocean that way, too, when they just kept going, because that was frightening. <laughs> um, also, whoever was left over, if... Uh-huh. There wasn't enough reason to leave. Uh, a few years later, a huge fire destroyed pretty much the rest of the town. So, oh my god, and it burned down. I would say, you know, somebody's communicating something to you guys. I don't think we should live here. What do you think, everybody? I think there's <laughs> something's gonna rye. There, uh, apparently, it's so funny. If you look this town up on Wikipedia, they always have like famous people that were like born here or lived there for twenty years. The only <laughs> the only incident of a famous person here is David Carradine, the actor, oh, yeah. um, lived in Wellington for about a year in the 80s while filming a movie called Americana that I've never heard of. So it doesn't <laughs> seem like it's worth it. Um, How many times did he choke himself and jerk off here? <laughs> oh, my God. Him and his brother was here, too. Maybe he had his brother do really? it for him. That's how I <laughs> saved his life for a couple of years. <laughs> yeah. Him, his brother, and Grizzly Adams all hung out in town together for a year. What a weird the guy. That's played, bizarre. Yeah, yeah, a strange thing. Uh, reviews of this town, my favorite part, obviously. Mm-hmm. I love pe- he, people's just fucking mediocre little gripes that they have about <laughs> something. It's so yeah. funny. Dude, this is my particular issue, so fuck this town. I'm always like, yes, I agree, sir. Yeah. <laughs> so, David Carradine's jizz is still all over the place. It's everywhere. And they they make it a, a like, that's a landmark? No. <laughs> Four stars. Safety yeah. is not an issue. Okay. Mm. Uh, you have to be smart, but our community is safe and watches out for one another. What the fuck does that mean? You have to be smart. Sounds like there's, what? like, it sounds like there's sinkholes everywhere. You got to look where you're going, but, um, well, let's find Keep out. on your toes. <laughs> Maybe more people will make it clear. We'll find out here. Yeah. Three stars. Wellington is a great community for someone who's looking for a quiet, reserved life in a small town. The town's population is dominated mainly by elderly and middle-aged people. If you are younger, Wellington is most likely not the place for you. I've had about the average experience living as a teenager in this town. There's not much to do in the summer except go to the pool unless you go to a surrounding town. The town has a bit of an issue with druggies who will just roam the streets. I pictured Night of the Living Dead, just yeah. arms out. Uh, I, see, I see that American Horror Story vampire druggie. That, uh, yeah, that's fine, too. Just yeah. But either way, just going dope. Yeah. Like, like 50s like, dope fiends, dope. Yeah. Shaking their head really, really fast. This is amazing, though. A uh, bit of an issue with druggies who will just roam the streets, but they're typically not dangerous and less bothered. No. You say that about a woodland animal. <laughs> They're not dangerous unless bothered. That's what they say about javelina in Arizona. Yeah. They're not yeah. dangerous unless bothered. It's the same thing. That, it's a that's, rattlesnake. It'll push on. It's scared, too. That's amazing. The crime rate is low. We'll, we'll tell you about that. Chief, slow down here. You don't know what you're talking about. Uh, only a few incidents here and there. There's a rec center that offers great services for children in the summer. The town is very slow moving. Overall, if I were to move away from this area, I would only move back if I was retiring. Okay. There you go. Now, these are all short and hilarious. Three stars. The only thing we can really do is fish. There isn't a whole lot of other outdoor activities that you can do here. Mm-hmm. That's it. Two stars. Quote, I do not like this town. <laughs> <laughs> like you. <laughs> I. That's that's a headline. I mean, you're not burying the lead. I do not like this town. Let me tell you why. Um, Let's hear it. I do not like this town. I can't wait to move. There isn't much to do here. I ho- think the next one's going to rhyme with move, I think. <laughs> right? Unless it's a haiku. I was just going to say, it could be a haiku. We don't know. We'll find out. Uh, there is a small on the edge of my seat. <laughs> there is a small selection of jobs here, and it is hard to get a job. That sounds like the way you'd write a haiku to make sure the yeah. syllables line up. Like weird. Yeah. Two stars. Here we go. Uh, winter storms can cause ice issues. Spring yeah. storms bring tornadoes, and summer is usually drought. Thanks. <laughs> I appreciate you giving us the general overview of the weather. Ice in the winter, hot in the summer, tornadoes in the spring. That's Kansas. Thanks. We got that. Uh, That's also uh, all the states of water in those seasons. We know. (laughs) We understand. (laughs) These are great here coming up. One star. This place is the worst of the worst. 
Uh-huh. Okay. Full of druggies or people who are out to scam you. Stay away if you can. Scam you? Scam you. They're going to scam you. Stay away if you can. That's They've had a particular experience, I yeah, feel they like. Sure yeah. They've been scammed by, they like... They got their shoes shined on a street corner at 2 a.m., and it, the, it was another, just Vaseline. The aluminum siding guy fucked them over and told them it <laughs> yeah. was, like, free if they were a model home, but then there was he had to pay for shipping and handling. It was a whole deal. Scammers! <laughs> uh, one star, quote, worse than terrible. <laughs> this is great. <laughs> Quote, These people are fantastic. Good place to be if you are homeless because you will feel right at home here. <laughs> what? What does that mean? I don't want to be homeless anywhere where there's tornadoes, first of all. I don't want to be just sucked oh, into the yeah. atmosphere while I'm yeah. sleeping. I didn't even know it was coming because I don't have a TV to tell me about it or anything. I don't want that happening. Okay. Um, quote, there is nothing to do here and everyone knows there is nothing to do. You will think you are living in a nightmare. (laughs) Wow. Where did the town touch you? Where did Wellington touch you, sir? (laughs) Jesus Christ. Um, anyway, population of this town, 7,550 people. So Mm -hmm. way less than there was when the first tornado came through and drove everybody out. Um, few more females and males about normal median age is right about the national average here 38 uh it is uh there are way more old people the kid wasn't lying about that more elderly really? people there more people over 75 basically over that mm-hmm. 85 over is a lot it's it's high uh people in this town married is just about the national average it's 53% so close to that uh race of this town 83.1% white 1.9% black Point three percent Asian. Oh, that is like one family restaurant, and they're incredibly like incredibly low. That's yeah. it. Um, what else do we have here? Yeah, three uh, nine point five percent Hispanic. Uh, religion. It's very religious here, though. Sixty one point two percent are religious, which is higher than the fifty fifty, and it's spread around pretty equal uh, other christian yeah. faith you got catholics and baptists uh, methodists are everywhere it's it's all jesus it's man. all all mixed in there you know what it isn't though is jewish 0.0 percent jewish it's one thing it certainly isn't uh you got that uh, the county sumner county last presidential election uh, pretty conservative here 24 percent voted democrat 74 percent republican 2.1 percent independent the uh, uh, the median household income here is a little lower than the national average. It's usually about fifty four thousand right now. Here it's forty three and a half thousand for the median okay. household income. Cost of living is low though. That's the thing. Um, one one hundred is average regular. Mm-hmm. Here it's a seventy three. Housing though is a twenty eight out of a hundred. Oh. Median home cost here, Jimmy, sixty seven thousand six hundred dollars. <laughs> That's ridiculous that's uh, most trucks cost more than that That, most like a new dodge a new dodge ram will cost you more than that you know what i'm saying way more that is crazy not that it should cost that much but (laughs) a house should cost more than a car is what we're getting at i mean the the new the new like diesel uh one ton single tires are like ninety thousand dollars that's crazy jesus christ so if we've convinced you damn it yeah you you know what you're gonna move to a nice sturdy building and you yeah. like laying in bathtubs for long periods of time and going in storm <laughs> cellars and shit like that. We have for you the Wellington, Kansas Real Estate Report. All right. Your average two-bedroom rental here is $695, which is half the national Why average, pretty yeah. much. That's crazy. Um, here is a three-bedroom, one-bath, 1300 or one and a half bath 1309 square foot house so here's kind of your yeah your kind of average starter family home you got Mm -hmm. a couple of kids um it's this one's particular one's kind of a shit box but Mm -hmm. the size and everything it's a ranch house there's some rooms that look like possibly some hoarding has happened in there really yeah maybe a and e has been through there once in a while um there is a washing room in the living room or washing machine in the living room what? I don't know if that's just, I don't feel like going any further than that or what. 
And Turn it's been, the game up. Spin cycle started. <laughs> Come on. I can't hear shit. I feel like it's been there a while, though, because there's a box of Special K cereal on it, and I haven't <laughs> seen that in a while. When's the last time you saw a box? Is that, they sell that anymore? Is that around I'm still? I'm more worried about James. That water's got to come out of the washer. How do you get water? They got wa- they water gotta have, and sewer hookups in they the They got to have, room? I guess. I mean, maybe they just. How do you do or, that? Or not. We don't know. Or, or it's just, just comes a table. In and out the window. <laughs> it's just, a, or they're just using it as a table. We don't know to hold the special K. Yeah, that's it. We not got. We need somewhere for the damn cereal. Uh, four bedroom, three bath, thirty one hundred fifty one square foot house. This is nice. It's a nice house. How much was that other house? We didn't. Oh, I'm sorry, fifty nine thousand dollars. Fifty nine thousand oh for that dump. So I mean, for but I mean, it's. I guess if you yeah. want to remodel it, uh, four bedroom, three bath, thirty one fifty one square foot. It's a lot of lot of wood. There's a lot of attention to detail inside. Carved wood, shit like that. It's it's very it's nice. It's like a Tudor style house. Not bad at all. One hundred ninety five thousand dollars for that. <laughs> Three thousand square feet. Almost thirty two hundred square feet. That's unbelievable. A, that's wild. And then finally, four bedroom, four bath, T ball for each and every pee hole out you there. Betcha. Four thousand seven hundred eighty square feet. This what? Is, that's a big one right there. That's a big house. It's ugly. It's yeah. a big, but it's, there's brick and stone. There's like eight different kinds of siding. It's one of those houses okay. where whatever kind of siding has a spot in it. Uh, yeah. It's a big, giant, open concept house, but it's too open because it's does, just one does, enormous room. Does it feel like a bunch of people have owned it and added their little piece to it? No, it doesn't. No? It feels like they built it at whatever time they built it at. They built it for every trend that was big at that exact moment, God. and now they've all, all right. kind of gone out. Uh, <laughs> 499000 bucks for that, though. That's a, almost 5,000 square feet. Yeah, that's so. a big-ass house. Big-ass house. Things to do here. Oh, Jimmy, is there things oh, to do? Obviously. Yeah. Why else would people be here unless there was amazing fun and entertainment the kansas wheat festival is going to be here jimmy oh oh you bet yeah. oh baby i'm telling you the kids all the kids my kids anyway they're being good just so they can go here all year long it's like well if you're not good you can't go to the kansas wheat festival we um, fuck what santa thinks and it says from their website if you are ready for a little summer excitement mark your calendars okay. for the 121st wheat festival in kansas wow it's a okay. long yeah. long way of wheat here it's held um july in july so it's going to be hot and weedy God, jesus christ jesus. that's a lot man um the kansas wheat festival is a five-day event there's contests and competitions for each day of course uh-huh. there is the parade's theme for 2021 was quote traveling through the decades oh yeah. man um anyway here is what's happening here the three gun cowpoke shootout's gonna happen what i assume that's like what they had at um what's the place in arizona the oh rawhide rawhide you know, remember yeah. they had like that the yeah, gun yeah. battle i assume that's Street what it is gun, yeah yeah with cap guns and shit and some right. guy falls out of a building and you know uh the baker's bonanza the county farm bureau and interim health care of wellington that's who sponsors that Bed races are happening. Oh, those are great. Those are hilarious when people fall yeah. off beds onto the concrete. <laughs> I do enjoy that. Wheels on them. It's, yeah, that's very dangerous. Uh, it's a cornhole, just cornhole. <laughs> you know what it is, but it sounds yeah. awful. <laughs> Followed by the cow chip toss. That Gross! sounds that sounds way nicer than cornhole, but is actually way more disgusting. <laughs> cornhole sounds like they're diddling each other. Cow chips sound nice, but that's actually tried cow shit yeah as opposed to just a nice bean bag that that sounds like it's a, a salsa competition the next one catch your breath for that though because you're going to need you're going to need all your faculties for the design a bookmark contest oh boy wow that sounds terrific uh jesus edible book contest edible what? book co- i guess you make a book you can eat and they see who makes the best one the hell are you people doing down there a horseshoe, t- yeah. a horseshoe tournament. Just old men. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Throwing horseshoes. They're probably horseshoes. real horseshoes over there. I- I'm sure. Hot dog eating contest. That's disgusting. Well. Perfect. Yeah. Kids sidewalk chalking contest. Mm-hmm. And then close it all up with a lip sync contest. Uh, what? Wow, this is a fucking death. At least, at least there. You don't have the ear piercing of, of the horrific singing of these people. If you close your eyes, you just get to hear a nice song. Just turn your back. Bring your lawn yeah. chair. Turn your back to the stage and go, I like this song. 
This is fine. This one's not so bad. At this least is all right. It's top 40, but whatever. Yeah. I know this. Girls just want to have fun. <laughs> you don't have to watch some dipshit gyrate and pretend right. to sing it up on stage. Uh, so there's that. And then yeah. finally, the next thing, we won't talk much about it, but I just have to tell you it's there because it's hilarious. The Panhandle Railroad Museum. Because <laughs> the Panhandle of Oklahoma is south and a little bit west of this. So the Panhandle Railroad Museum. Wow. It's pretty great that a square state does something panhandle. Isn't that, that's why I was like, there's no panhandle in Kansas. And I was like, oh, one. it's by Oklahoma's panhandle. Yeah. That's right here. So it's a pretty boring description. You're you're going to look at a bunch of railroad shit. If you're interested yeah. in trains, it's probably pretty right. cool. But otherwise, you'd be a lot of railroad spikes. Bored to tears. Now, crime rate in this town. Remember that kid said there was none. Yeah. A few incidents here and there. Well, property crime almost double the national average. So <laughs> Druggies, babe. I don't know where he was before this, but. A worse place, apparently. And then violent crime, murder, rape, robbery, and, of course, assault. The Mount Rushmore of crime, slightly below average. So that that sounds like druggy behavior, as they quote, unquote, druggy behavior. (laughs) Everyone in this town calls them druggies. (laughs) Those darn druggies, they're at it again. (laughs) What do you call them? Do you say junkies? Depends on what kind of drugs they're on. Yeah. If they're acting crazy, crackheads. they're a crackhead. Yeah. If yeah. they're if they're a dope fiend, you see them with the lean and shit, that's a yeah. that's a junkie. Like it, yeah. you know, you can tell what people are on. Uh, yeah. yeah. I I like to be descriptive. It's not out of respect for them. It's just I like to be descriptive, you know what I mean? What do you say for methods? Do you call them tweakers? They're tweakers, right? It's a tweaker, yeah. They yeah. can be confused yeah. with crackheads sometimes. That's the problem though. Yeah. They can yeah, depend. They can. Then you have to figure out where you are at that right. point, you know. Is a cra- is the difference between a crackhead and a tweaker open source? Is that what that is? <laughs> it's open source and I think Scabs. it's also I, it, there's there's a there's a little bit more uh perseverance to the tweaker for some reason. Yeah. The tweaker yeah. You'll see them when they look like they should be dead, and they'll still yeah. be walking at like twice the normal pace. <laughs> With a backpack full of coffee. <laughs> yeah. A crackhead eats once in a while. That's true. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Like a crackhead <laughs> is not as far gone as a tweaker, I, I feel like. It's a different thing. So you have to realize where you are. If you're in Arizona, it's a tweaker. If you're like, you know, drive through like the city of Poughkeepsie, that's a crackhead yeah. probably at that point. That's so a great you, point. There yeah. aren't a lot of crackheads in Arizona. There was, there was no, I never saw many. It's no, not, it's, it's not full. It's tweaking though. Ooh, yeah, boy. Those are tweakers. <laughs> so, speaking of all of this, let's talk uh, about a murder that occurred here. Okay. All right. We're going to go back to a magical time. Not really. It's actually a pretty crappy time, but it's uh, funny to talk about because we were both kids in it and we'll have a lot yeah. of memories. And by the way, at the end of this show, we are going to, to save us from memorializing and laughing at 1992 now, we're going to yeah. do it at the end of the show, and I have some special <laughs> things to do that with. So don't worry about that. That's Terrific. coming at the end of the show. Some <laughs> funny shit here. So uh, December 5th, 1992, we're mm. going to. So, yeah. December 5th, closing Dece- in on Christmas. Closing in on Christmas oh. in Kansas. Yeah. Oh, oh it's a... It's just a very ugly time of year around here. Absolutely. No tornadoes, though, so that's no. good. But they're coming in the spring, so we do have to think about that a little bit. Everything's dead, and there's about two inches of snow. <laughs> yeah, yeah, two inches. Just that. that That's all they mist. get. Yeah, yeah. That, just it's, enough to make it bleak. It's kind of ice more than snow, yeah, really. Yeah. You know, it's uh, it's an ice uh, cap to everything. Jesus, it, it's uh, my. By the way, my vision of Kansas is skewed. I must say, I'm, it's not fair to Kansas because I have read so much shit about btk so yeah. every time i hear about kansas i'm i'm coloring that with he's walking around in that picture <laughs> yeah. like stalking a woman and doing like weird shit and you know yeah. jerking off on a hanged teenager and stuff like that like you know what i'm saying like all of it's right there it's yeah. all right that's all i ever see is like he's there like mm, yeah sparky big time and i'm like <laughs> oh god <laughs> the worst get thing. me out of kansas get me out of here <laughs> So I'm sorry, Kansas. I'm going to I have Disneyland. A, going to Disneyland. I've driven through Kansas a couple yeah. of times, and yeah, I've been there several times. I stopped and ate at a diner that looked not like a diner. Um, no, no, it just looked like a manufactured kind of house thing in the middle of nowhere. And uh, I think they call that a cafe. I had a good turkey sandwich. It was great. Yeah. The lady was nice. Who well, ran the place? It was fine. I have no complaints about Kansas. You look out, and it's just fields yeah. of it's just fucking corn, man. I mean, you can see forever corn. Forever a corn. Ma- <laughs> a man in a clear mask made you that turkey sandwich. <laughs> I'm sure he did. With yeah, a mustache and terrifying, balding, <laughs> terrifying and fishnets. Oh God, yeah. 
Absolutely. I didn't see him. They keep him well behind the door. So uh, this 1995 here, let's talk about a young man. You know what? He's not a young man. No. He's a dipshit. He's 40 years old and a dipshit. Oh, God. <laughs> let's start with a dipshit, shall we? Terrific. Um, from all I can see, this man's legal name is Billy. That tells really? you a lot. Yeah. Um, is that right? Yeah. And, you know, everything I've seen on him that's uh, official paperwork, it's Billy. I don't, I don't think see, I've ever heard of that. I don't see a William, even a Billiam. I see Billy. That's it. <laughs> Uh-oh. <laughs> so Billy T. Reed. Mm-hmm. All right. Billy T. over here. Yeah. Billy T. Reed is 40 years old. And let's just say I don't think things have gone quite as well for Billy T. As, <laughs> not to plan? Yeah, not to plan. I think things would have maybe gone a little bit better for him as we... we he reminds me, it's so funny, that his name is Billy because... Just what the new Stranger Things season came out, so we watched right. the rest of them just to get caught up or whatever. And Billy, Max's brother, the you know mm-hmm. little redheaded girl's brother, uh, right. Billy is the scumbag of the series. Like for right. like two seasons, he's a total scumbag, and then you know at the end, he well, now we're supposed to like him because he did one nice thing in two years. So, <laughs> hi, I'm Lindsey Graham, the host of Wondery Show American Scandal. We bring to life some of the biggest controversies in U.S. history presidential lies, corporate fraud, corruption in sports. In our newest series, we look at a community that took on one of the largest chemical companies in the world. The fight began in the mid-1990s when a mysterious plague struck a cattle farm. The farm's owner went looking for answers and teamed up with an unlikely partner from the world of corporate law. But as the two dug deeper, they uncovered a secret that threatened thousands of lives. Follow American Scandal on Apple Podcasts, Amazon Music, the Wondery app, or wherever you're listening now. Listen one week early and ad free by joining Wondery Plus. He, he like he beat up children. He can't like choked. He, he choked Lucas for Christ's sake. You know, like what are you doing, asshole? Anyway, <laughs> this guy reminds me of if Stranger Things Billy wasn't you know destroyed by a demogorgon or whatever, right. he would have grown up to be Billy T. Reed. Uh, okay, so you have to picture that guy. Okay. Mullet, um, few-year-old Camaro, I'm assuming. Yeah, you know yeah. what I'm saying? It's got some front-end damage from, you know, he was drunk one night. Who knows what happened? But new exhaust. <laughs> oh, it's he keeps the exhaust right. He keeps the exhaust. It's tuned and it's Sounds right. Sounds great, yeah. So he's got some problems um, okay. from a young age. He's just, mm-hmm. he's a he's a white trash dipshit is what Billy yeah. is. That's the best way to describe him. It's kind of the only way to describe him. And when we tell you more about him and what he's doing at 40 years old, you're going to go, Oh God, you, what a scumbag. So as a juvenile, he had uh, a bunch of criminal property damage arrests. He would just, yeah. he's a vandalizing. He's a vandal. Like breaking an windows and stuff. Shit. Like, yeah. Breaking things and, you know, damaging property and okay. kid vandalizing yeah. stuff. Yeah. Kids that have, like, bad home lives that go out and do this dumb shit rather than finding some constructive way to, which, I mean, they're children. I mean, sure. really, yeah. I don't blame them for that. But the problem is, once they're adults, then um, then we have to deal with them. And it's our problem. Yeah. yeah. Then it's not the parents' problem anymore. No, you it's go, society's issue. Watch your goddamn kid, all right? Jesus Christ. Now it's like, ah, yeah. oh, fuck, this person's like a full-fledged adult now. <laughs> it's Can not you... necessarily a problem as much as it is an issue. There you go. It's a, yeah. not a problem, but an issue. So it's a good name for the show this week, maybe. So <laughs> not a problem, but an issue. So he's he did that, and he just kind of never stopped with this dumb shit. Never oh. stopped. He's been arrested to uh, for different things, for burglary, um, he pled guilty to a misdemeanor theft charge, and he made a deal, a plea deal. He was on up on a burglary charge, which is way more than a theft charge. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. so he made a deal to get off on that and pled guilty to misdemeanor theft and also has pled guilty recently to criminal, criminal trespassing. Oh, boy. You're 40 years old, bro. And it's still going like this. You're, yeah, you're 40 years old. You're stealing on a petty enough level where they're willing to give you a deal that that's, you know, from right. a felony to a misdemeanor theft, basically, sure. it, you couldn't have been stealing that much. You weren't stealing you know, the fucking Hope Diamond at that point, no. were you? Like there wasn't a. I'd like to like to know what it was that he yeah. was stealing. This wasn't an Ocean's Eleven caper. This no. was. Who knows what he stole? This is an idiot. You're not DV Cooper. This no. is just 
dumb stuff. He stole like two two quarts of 10W30 from the Flying J. <laughs> you know what I mean? Or all the chromies off of a, off of an 18-wheeler. All of them. Every little one. He's like, I got these. Now I got them for cars for the rest of my goddamn life. <laughs> Next four and a half cars are covered, buddy. I tell you what. All set. Four and a half. Four and a half. Or four and four a motorcycle. And motorcycle. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> or nine scooters. Who knows? I'll put them on my damn dirt bike at this point. I'll tell you what. You know, I'm going to go in and steal me some two-stroke, too, because that's going to, I'm going to need that as well. Shit, I got the 10W30 for the other car. So we're dealing with an asshole. A 40-year-old guy who's still getting into trouble on this level is a dipshit. Yeah, and- it's... It's cer- he certainly mit- uh, mit- misled, led astray. Uh, no responsibility. He's just a tool. He's an idiot. And he, this man's been married. This man's been oh married. Oh, my God. Of course he's been married. Yeah. I mean, thank, thankfully, I don't know if someone had an inhospitable womb or this guy's got a low sperm count or just, just the intervention of the universe in a positive in- direction. Us. Inhospitable. <laughs> Whatever the science is behind the fact that he and his wife produced no offspring, <laughs> hallelujah, God damn it. Just had your hotel concierge <laughs> at her fallopian tubes. <laughs> she was very nice about it, at least. Yeah. <laughs> Every hotel you well, walk into, that, that concierge at this woman's fallopian tubes going, Hmm. hmm. I don't see it. So you made it. Did you make it through through our site? Okay. Yeah. Not through a third party. Okay. Through our site. Wow. It should be here then. Sometimes if it's through a third party, they don't show up. They're on another server. But this, I through our site. Click. 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 Huh. Huh. You have an email. You have an email or your reservation. Let me see it. Let me see. That. I'll look it up by the confirmation number. That'll do. I'm sure. Maybe. I'm, huh. huh. Hold on, can I see that again? I'm going to write it down, and then they write it down on a post-it. They disappear for 20 minutes, and then they disappear through a door I didn't previously realize existed <laughs> behind them. Like there's always like a, a an art piece around, and you don't even know it's there. They like disappear into the wall, and it's they're gone for a half door. hour. Yeah, I don't know. It's I I feel like it's like the Death Star in there. There's hallways yeah. with stormtroopers. I don't know what's happening, but I, I'm and then not. The welcome. other lady, Mr. Wisman, welcome. Yeah, here's your room key. Have yeah. a great day. Have fun. Bye. <laughs> James, you okay? <laughs> James, why are you crying? <laughs> I'll be in the lobby a while. I'll be down here. I'll be down here. Unfucking believable. <laughs> how, James, how long do you think you'll be down here? Well, I ordered food, so probably a while. I think a while. <laughs> they had me paying cash because I don't have I don't a room. Have a room. Number. <laughs> no, I got I got fucking Uber Eats is what I did. It's, it's gonna. I don't know when it's coming. Place is like 4.3 miles away, it says. It's going to be a while. <laughs> I love the to laugh at my pain. Torture is, it's at this point, it's, it's so funny. fucking I funny. Do I laugh every time? I every laugh every time. time. I can't help it at this point. It's like my discomfort is going to be fun. You, I feel you looking at me, and I look, and you're just shaking your head. I don't know how it happens. Every damn time. <laughs> what I do? <laughs> what I do to these people? And I'm so nice. To, am I nice? You have to. <laughs> just so people are lying. people are going to see me like from the show, like yelling at these people. I'm not. Yeah. I'm excessively <laughs> nice. I'm super accommodating and kind. I don't. You know. I'm. Oh no, that's okay. I understand. <laughs> Oh, God, it's so good. <laughs> and they're like, no, no, further. No, head down further. You got to really bend down. <laughs> really bend over to, for us to get right up your ass. <laughs> uh, it, just, it hurts. <laughs> <laughs> it hurts so bad. <laughs> hurts me, too. So so he didn't have any kids. He's 40. No, thank God, no kids. But he has an ex-wife, though. Mm-hmm. Um an ex-wife obviously yeah. this is the type of guy who has an ex-wife right. he doesn't have a, or many ex-wives right. so yeah. he's got an ex-wife named marla and um they were divorced in 1985 so he's been mm-hmm. a been a swinging bachelor for about the last seven mm-hmm. years here yeah he's got to be a popular guy around town with the ladies i would imagine <laughs> obviously i mean who doesn't want this guy <laughs> Jesus, Craig can go see him in court watch him perform it's gonna be fun <laughs> divorced since he was like 32 though yeah, 33, 32, something like that. Okay. So now Marla talks about later on about that he repeatedly, well, the way she put it, made threats against her 
before their divorce saying that now this is a threat here. This isn't, you know, I'm going to slash your tires or something that's very abusive. But I would say this is over the top. Let's get your opinion. Everybody out there, Jimmy, let's see Uh, that he quote. He said he promised he would kill me and cut my head and fingers off so nobody could identify the body. That's way too far. That's a that's a that's a threat. That's a very specific threat that you've thought about. That's not just I'll kill you. That's you don't even have a plan. Shut up. I'll kill you and I'll get away with it. This is how I plan to. This is the dismount that I have planned. Okay. Also, (laughs) I'm going to really try to get away with this. Show you the playbook. Yeah. So just to let you know who what he's all about, and he's also uh, what he does is he buys. (laughs) Jesus Christ. He lets teenagers this is like the express from a couple weeks ago except that guy was like 29 or something and more closer to their age whatever but this guy lets teenagers drink in his trailer oh no just drink there and he buys them alcohol and stuff even when he's not home like it's not just like i'm gonna watch you drink like they'll go to his house and party when he's not even there and he's fine with that (sighs) very weird for a 40 year old man comes home and there's children drinking and he's like hey guys i'm home hey yeah what? that's pretty much it that's the way it works so that's what he's doing everyone in town is noticing this yeah and people aren't thrilled with it sure. to be honest they're like yeah. well that's weird i don't like seeing groups of teenagers going to that creeps house yeah the town dirtbags house right. you know with his fucked yeah. up eye rock no one wants yeah. that <laughs> it's just creepy man so recently by the way he's had some He's had some run-ins recently with people. Yeah. Uh, one young lady, an acquaintance of his, um, she says that uh, the, on December 4th, the day before we're going to talk about here, she, he came over to her house at 2 a.m., which uh-huh. is aggressive right away. It is, yeah. you got to know someone really well to just pop up at 2 a.m. Like that 2 has to be. <sighs> even if I know you, there better be an emergency. Oh, yeah, an emergency, and I mean, even if, they're, if there's an emergency, you better know them well. You know what yeah. I mean? Like, you can right. come to my house at 2 a.m., and I'd be like, oh, shit, what's going on? I'd know You're something right. was wrong, but... Why do, you, why do you need to be here right now is always going to be the first question. Yeah, did you, yeah. Did you run into a tree <laughs> down my street, basically? Right. Did, you, did that happen? You need to use my phone? So this is way worse, though. He shows up at 2 a.m., and she's like, hi. Yeah. Um, and he's like... What up? You know, how you doing? I'm sure he was just sober as a church mouse at this point, too. Um, 2 a.m. small talk. 2 a.m. small talk. And she's like, so what's up? And he's like, yeah. eh, not too much. He's like, oh, here's something. What if I give you some money? Uh-huh. Like, I mean, I like money. Everyone likes money. And he's like, I give you money and you can jerk me off. <laughs> <laughs> this is just a friend of his. I'm here for a prostitution proposition. <laughs> I'm here for a just a quick, you know, just a quick booty call, except we're going to make it illegal because it's much <laughs> creepier that way. What do you charge for handies? Good morning. <laughs> this isn't like an old girlfriend, somebody that no, you can, you know, hey, come on now. Remember old times? Come on. Remember that one time when we went down? <laughs> oh, come on now. We went down this on vacation. This is going to be the first time that she jerks him off ever. Ever. And it's going to be for, I assume, three crinkled dollars that came out of his Three crinkled singles that came out of his jean pocket. Is that what we're, we're deciding here, I think, yeah. at 2 a.m.? Out of his After tight jean pocket. Yeah. yeah. And he had to reach in, like, he, like, had to keep pulling them in and out. Yeah. Like, what's going on? I got one of them, and that's one. Uh, what the hell's going on here now? Oh, this that's one. a five. You can't have that one. Oh, hold on. No, that's... <laughs> Want to jerk me off? <laughs> Just a handful of crinkled... Please. Not, no idea what it is. I don't know what it is. You open it and find out. Could be eight dollars. Could be seventy dollars. Who knows? You know what? It's like let's make a deal. You know what I'm saying? It's you don't know what's behind door number in my hand. You have no fucking idea. <laughs> I open my fingers. It could be a lifetime of bliss and magic. Could be three crinkled up dollars with French fry grease on them. You never know. Could be, could be shame and regret. Could it's behind door number four digits. <laughs> door number four digits. I know there's French fry grease because I put French fries in there earlier. So <laughs> there's probably two in there still. Uh, you, uh, you know what? Three crinkled up dollars and the rest of my French fries I got in my pocket. <laughs> Anything left, even the crispy ones that are on the bottom, the little tiny fuckers, they're delicious. You can have from my from my thigh sweat. They're extra salts. That's all it is, but. <laughs> That's it, baby. You want to do that? Surprisingly, this is quite the offer, I got to say, uh-huh, if you're just yeah. 
watching TV at two in the morning and you I mean, <laughs> you don't get a lot of chance to make money in the middle of the night, but this isn't the most attractive offer. <laughs> you, you don't really, right? <laughs> that often. <laughs> she just knocks on the door, wanna punch the clock? <laughs> yeah, yeah. And she's like, not really. She's sleeping, ripping shit out of her eyes. <laughs> so he says that's she says that's okay i'm good yeah, i'm just I'm, hanging and doing my yeah. thing so he's like all right then and he's like i'll be going now and she's like all right bye and he leaves and that's <laughs> and she said there was nothing threatening about it at all it wasn't it was like he came over and was like you feel like going to the diner i just feel like sitting down and having pancakes and smoking for an hour you know what i'm saying just having to talk <laughs> about talk about like bands we like and shit like that that's what it felt like but he was just like jerk me off for a couple dollars <laughs> <laughs> want to play tug of war if you win i win too <laughs> tell you what you know how your daddy tell you to pull his finger well <laughs> tell you what tell you what boy do i have a proposition just a non-discriminate amount of money just handing her like a, a handful of cash huh whatever he's got you know just beer money i don't know gas money what? so wow. she says no he leaves it's mm-hmm. fine then she she's sitting in her house a little while later, an hour yeah. later or so, fucking <laughs> knock at the door. What about now? It's Billy again. She opens yeah. it. Billy, B- Sir Billiam, may I help you? <laughs> Sir Billiam of Wellington, how may I help you? <laughs> and he says, uh, how's it going? You know, I'm just in the neighborhood again. She's like, yeah, okay, great. And he's like, listen, I'm sorry about earlier, by the way. I, that was, I understand. I, You're not like that. You're a nice girl. I'm offering yeah. For you to jerk me off for money, that's something, you know, not the kind of girl you offer that kind of thing to. <laughs> Jesus Christ, I'm real sorry. So, you know what? Tell you what. I'll give you this money. All you got to do is take your clothes off. I'll jerk myself off. I'll just look <laughs> at you. You still get the money, but you ain't got to touch me none. But I got to see your pussy. Is that all right? <laughs> Same money, I'll do it myself. Same money, I'll do it myself. Because he thought maybe t- maybe the touching me part was what was right. unattractive to her. <laughs> He went and thought it over. <laughs> he thought it over. He's like, well, I mean, maybe that was the problem, I feel like. <laughs> you know, clean up then. She's got to worry about things like that. I how about am a sh- piece of shit. How, how can sh- I fix huh. this? How can I get a load out of my nutsack right now? Yeah. <laughs> With <laughs> another person in the room for three crinkled dollars and a couple of uh, cold Wendy's French fries. How can I do that? Huh. <laughs> Shit. Uh, well, I, here's an idea. Unbelievable. Susie's home. Um, I, I'm. I don't even know what the hell this guy. Is. So right now, this is ninety two. This is nineteen ninety two. Wow. We're getting a, an idea here. Have we? Have has everyone got a portrait of this guy? <laughs> Real gentleman. So far, you know, I'll cut your head off and your fingers so no one can identify the body, and I'll jerk me off for three dollars. No, wait. I'm a gentleman. You just take your clothes off. I'll do it myself. Um, you know, I'll burglary. Still you. <laughs> I'll still pay you. Burglary, things like yeah. that. He's yeah. just, he's batting a thousand, really. He really is. He's quite the. <laughs> he's really destined for success. He's destined for success. He deserves to live in a town named after the Duke of Wellington, I feel like. He's he's this fulfilling is... his royal <laughs> providence is what's happening right now. He's <laughs> already a stellar story. Oh, head to toe purple. He's just perfect. <laughs> He's regal, Jimmy. He's he's fucking regal. Mm. So um, that's what he does. So she said, no, thanks. No, thanks. I'm yeah. good. Uh, you know, it wasn't the touching that was the part is I don't it's want you to seeing. I don't want you to jizz in my living room, I think, is really what I'm getting at right now. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so when she said that, he was like, oh, shit. All right. And instead of just leaving again, this time he pushed her up against the wall. Oh, no. Okay. He shoves her up against the wall with one hand, and then he begins, uh, quote, fondling her with the other hand. Oh, God. So he just starts he starts feeling her up, and then it all stops when – this is a very – I mean, I, I picture the druggy zombie coming at her, but at this point, she kicked him twice in the shin, and he oh, stopped yeah. and ran away. <laughs> so – it was like an old movie. She was like, yeah. no, you varmint. And he was like, oh, darn it. And he like, and he took off. 
Uh, we're making it's a tra- yeah. it's just traumatizing. Obviously, no one should come over your house and fondle Smart you girl, against though. your will. Yeah. yeah, she was like, "Fuck you, Billy! What yeah. the fuck are you doing?" Yeah, you know. And plus, she knew the guy. She's like, "Billy, get the right. fuck off me! What are you feeling my tit for? I'll knock you the fuck out!" You know, kick, kick. Next <laughs> one's your balls, and I think he right. took off at that point. Yeah. So yeah, good for her for fighting that off. So um, this is what I mean. We got things like that. Another person here, a teenage girl, ran away from home. And when she did, she had nowhere else to go, so uh-huh. she went to the house that everybody drinks at. Oh, God. I mean, if yeah. you're going to run away, at least you might as well be able to get some booze out of it, I mm-hmm. guess, if you're a teenager. So she goes there, and um, he hid her there and lied to her mother about her whereabouts. Really? Which you don't do when you're 40 years old. No. You're 40 years old, you're like, oh, shit. And then you talk that kid into going home, and if they don't, you go in the other room and you call their mother. They're a child. What do you, what is? I wouldn't open the I mean, door. Be like, there's right. a kid out there. I don't know, some fucking kid. They're probably selling something. I wouldn't know the neighborhood children. That's how that works. As a child, that's that's a there's a that's breaking the law at some point, right? That, Fuck from him, yeah, that's harboring yeah. a runaway. Is it is it kidnapping? I don't know. Lying to the parents. I mean, it could even if it's voluntary, she's not old enough to consent right. to be there. Right. So yeah. uh, you know what I'm saying. Especially if she's there against the parents' will. Right. There's got to be some kind of charges that come of that, but no, there's, there's no so charges really, that come of it. Wow. Somehow. So even with all of his other charges, there's he could have been in more trouble with that. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, it's 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 weird is what it is. It's I very weird. So. Yeah. He's a weird fuck. So let's enter some teenagers, shall we? All right. All right. December 5th, 1992. Let's talk about Michelle Tate. Mm-hmm. Uh, T-A-T-E. Michelle Tate. She's 16 years old. Um she um, has, uh, you know, her mother and father. She's got a couple of brothers and a sister. There's four yeah. kids total, so two brothers and a sister, two, two and two, the family has. Um, she is a high school junior at this point, 16 years old, goes to school around here. Um, she's moved to the area within the last year or so, so she's kind of new to the area. She wants to, she likes, she wants out of this town period like she's the type of teenager that's like i can't wait to go away to college Mm -hmm. i'm gonna party she wants to be a model that's what she wants to do so she wants to get get out of wellington kansas is step one if you want to be a model that's period this is it's almost a cliche for her to like show up on a greyhound in los angeles and have axel rose scream welcome to the jungle at her or something it's it's in 92, this was a thing that happened all the time. Oh, oh boy. Yeah. It's, I mean, yeah. Now you can do it at home. You can do, yeah. you can online, you can market yourself, you can do a different thing. But back then, if you were in Kansas, you weren't going to be a model, period. No. You had to go where models got work. That yeah. was it. So that's what she wanted to do. She liked to party with her friends. She liked to uh-huh. drink. She liked to hang out. She's a, she wants to go to college and get, get out of here and party and be a model. I mean, whatever. That's I I would want to do that, too, if I was a 16-year-old kid in Kansas. <laughs> yeah. I wanted to do that minus the college and modeling. So, you know what I mean? <laughs> I had no desires to, or, you know, aspirations of modeling, and uh, right. I didn't even think twice about college. I Coming out of high school, I was more likely to be a model than a, than a collegiate. Put it that way. <laughs> more likely to make my living that way than go to college, by far. Because <laughs> I never even thought of college at all, you know? Never. So, yeah, he uh, anyway, that's what she's doing and what she wants to do. She's got some friends here that she's hangs out with. One of them is Melinda Cohen, uh, K-O-E-H-N. Co- oh, that's, that's a fascinating Cohen one. or Cohen or I'm going to call that's it. has got to be Cohen, uh, right? I'm going to call it Cohen. Yeah. Uh, so Melinda, we'll just say Melinda. So we have Melinda and Michelle. There mm-hmm. we go. Melinda is her friend. She's also 16. Um, she has she's friends with her uh she her okay her step uncle melinda's step uncle is billy t reed okay what yes that's her step uncle there how's how did that work we'll talk we'll talk about it in a second there what is the relation here um is yeah it billy's brother um i believe it is billy's brother's stepdaughter that's who Got she it. is. Okay. She's Billy's brother's stepdaughter, so step uncle. That's how it that works. Makes sense. Yep. She's sixteen, and she likes her step uncle because she's allowed to go over there and drink, and party yeah, and shit. That's where and, you go. And it's oh, it's just it's just uh, you know Uncle Billy. That's fine. It's my brother. Don't worry about it. Going over there's adult supervision. It's going to be yeah. fine. Billy's an adult. My stepdad's brother's house. Going to my stepdad's brother's house, which is a. Weird. 
why would a 16 year old go to my stepdad's 40 year old brother's house? That's just <laughs> weird and silly. But I get it. I would be going there too if I was a teenager, though. Yeah. I went to weird places to hang out. Sure. And yeah, yeah. my one friend's parents, the guy smoked crack constantly. We went there anyway. We didn't care. <laughs> we could smoke weed downstairs. So who cares if he's smoking crack in his own time? My sister's <laughs> my sister's husband, first husband, lived in a trailer behind our apartments, and he had like a awesome. shed out back that they <laughs> yeah, converted. <laughs> you don't even need to tell any more of the story. He lived in a trailer behind the apartments that had a shed that he converted. Dot dot dot. Best story <laughs> <Yeah>. ever. <laughs> That's it right there. <laughs> and my sister chose that guy as her suitor. <laughs> She's like, I don't perfect. Know. That's a mighty nice shed she's got. He's got there, boy. I'll tell you something. I got some Night- things I need to store. <laughs> Night and shining aluminum. <laughs> That's amazing. Holy Gross. shit, man! His lawnmower don't even sit in the rain, boy. I tell you what, this is some serious. This guy's got it together, buddy. That That's shed something. out back. Ha- it was so gross, dude. So gross. It had a subfloor, but. It was. It was not. And there was electricity in it, James. It was just a shed. Oh and they well, a, yeah. A lot of they had a couch and yeah. A couch. There was a couch, a TV. Oh. There was. There was. I don't know if there was water or not, but okay. people lived in it. Whenever there is like sit down furniture, other than just like a lawn chair or something, right, if there yeah. is fabric furniture yeah yeah anywhere in furniture in, in an shed. outbuilding, there's something yeah. sexual happening there. Either someone uses that as their, like, jerk shack yeah. or somebody's, like, molesting someone out there or, like, <laughs> you know, there's something bad happening and there's jizz everywhere. There you was go crack in there, smoked in that place. Crack smoked. You go in there with a black light, it's going to be hideous is what I'm getting at. It's going to be bad. <laughs> so um, this particular night, Melinda Cohn, uh, Billy's stepniece, and yeah. uh, Michelle Tate, who is Melinda's yeah. friend here, they... Um, they come to uh, there, and they have another friend, a 17-year-old girl. They plan to hang out that night, visit friends, and um, at some point, they're going to end up spending the night. They want to crash out at Billy's house because yeah. they want him to buy them booze yeah. so they can go party around town and then come home, obviously not shit-faced to their parents. They want to crash yeah. out at his house and then go home the next day. Fresh as a daisy to the parents. Wasn't, That's a, wasn't that a fascinating time in the early 90s when we just trusted crooked adults to buy us booze and never try to fuck us? <laughs> we didn't know any better. We, How, isn't that we, crazy? <laughs> we thought of it this way. If they try to fuck us, we'll say no. But I really want that booze. <laughs> That's the way we thought about it. We didn't realize that they might be able to do it anyway or right. you know, kill us or something. Yeah. Isn't that, isn't that nuts? It's, uh, it's fucking... insane. I told the story when I was like 13 and some guy tried to like get my friend to come like <laughs> to his house and he was going to pay him in silver right. it was the weirdest he because he bought us he bought my friend cigarettes not even me i wasn't right. even smoking he bought my friend cigarettes and you know got him to do it and then i popped in the truck and was like what the fuck is going on and he was like i'm going to this guy's house and we're gonna get silver and i was like what get out. I, <laughs> no i took my knife out and then the guy told us to get out get out get out of here you guys are crazy because i was i was an asshole and I had a, <laughs> good for you hero i had a switchblade on me and i just took it out and popped it open it was like what's yeah. up motherfucker or stiletto it popped out of the top <laughs> yeah, not the one yeah. that popped up it shot out of the top like the one i had the other night yeah yeah, yeah like yeah. the one I, my travel knife so Stilettos anyway. are great. Yeah, that's good shit. So anyway, it worked. The guy was like, Jesus, these kids might be a little quicker than I give them credit for. This this might be harder than I thought. Yeah. That's good. Because I was pretty big. I was bigger than my friend, so he was like, oh, yeah. man. That's, never mind. I wanted to give him silver. This kid's got steel. Uh, Get out. I can't tell. I don't think I can take his butthole by force. I'm going to go now. Never mind. So anyway, my friend got no silver out of the deal, needless to say. <laughs> but he kept his life. He did keep his life. So Billy's brother is Tom Reed, and Mm -hmm. that's Melinda's uh, stepfather, like we said. Mm -hmm. Now, Melinda became Michelle Tate's best friend when Tate moved to this area from Hutchinson, which we've also done an episode about, (laughs) weirdly enough. Hutchinson, Kansas. Yeah, we've done an yeah. episode there. That's so weird. Um, this was last year. She moved here. I guess her parents got divorced. She moved here with her mother and her two brothers and her sister. So right away, she found herself a best friend, which is, that's, that's good. 
Yeah. yeah. If you move somewhere when you're 15, that's uh, I I did it. That that's hard, man, cuz you everyone is everyone's ass deep in friendships already. Right. Yeah. You have to really display something to these people to get them to invite you into their group. It's right. hard. So Most of the people here have been here a while and there's yeah. everything's established. They have inside jokes and yeah. stories about a time that guy shit his pants and Yeah, you don't know. Right. You're yeah, you yeah. you're talking to that person and that's right. the one who shit their pants and right. you're supposed to make that joke and they don't know it and it's a right. Remember it's a mess. You got a boner in third period, and yeah, I don't know that story. <laughs> yeah, you're going out with fart girl. Oh, let me tell you a story. You know what I mean? Yeah. That's the type of stuff that happens. Right. Oh man, let you me can, tell you about this party one time. You show up when you're 15. You over. might date fart girl and not know it. You don't even know it. You don't even know you got you got fart girl until it's too late. <laughs> so good. I'm glad that she had a friend. That's good. There, she made a friend, and that was excellent. And they were pretty inseparable apparently over this time. And through Melinda, uh, Michelle was very familiar with Billy Reed, as were most of the teens in the neighborhood here. And they would gather at Billy Billy Reed's house in Wellington um, because he would buy them booze and let them spend the night there. Sure. That's all. I mean, it was that simple. Um, He's that's how he is. So um, anyway, uh, they end up uh, a friend of the girls took them to another guy's house, Chuck Flynn. Now, Chuck Flynn is 36 years old. So oh from what I understand, he's not related to anybody here either. So I don't know. I guess they know him through Billy probably because he's Billy's yeah. friend. So him and so Billy are like tight. Epstein networking. This is weird. This is disgusting. Yeah, yeah, this is a really weird Epstein triangle that I don't oh, enjoy here. at all. Yeah. So they're going to Flynn's house. Flynn's, like I said, 36 to look mm-hmm. for Billy so Billy can mm-hmm. buy him booze. That's what they're looking for. They want some Billy booze. And um, they go there to find him. He, When they do, he's at Chuck's house watching TV. Billy is. He's hanging out there, um, whatever. And they said, hey, later on, will you buy us booze? You know, can we find you again later on and buy us booze and blah, blah, blah. Are you busy later? And he was like, no, nah, I'll buy you shit later. Don't worry about it. Oh, boy. So that, they didn't. That was it. They took off and he continued watching TV. Uh-huh. End of story. So uh, now Chuck Flynn, back at his house. It's about 8 o'clock at night now. Fast forward a little bit, because this was yeah. afternoon we're talking. Probably, yeah. About 8 o'clock at night, um, and in December, too, so it's dark, dark now. Yeah. It's not like it's Jan- you know Jan- or, uh, July or something, and it's dusk or mm-hmm. any shit like that. They're driving around town, These uh, Melinda and, and Michelle and another couple friends are driving around, when they see, this is also a bad sign, they see Billy on the street. Oh, he's walking. He's just walking, hands in pockets. He's probably got the shoulders up right, with the denim yeah. denim jacket collar up. <laughs> or I'm his picturing. Arms crossed. Yeah. yeah, just singing Ario Speedwagon or Boston or something. Hell yeah! I don't care if I'm left behind. People are living in competition. He's like comforting himself with it. Lonely <laughs> is the night. <laughs> All I want is to have my peace. Oh, hey, how you doing? Yeah, how you doing, ladies? I you. hope he's just doing like a mashup in his own head where he you sings different that songs. and throw, yeah, throws in some Billy Squire too. <laughs> throws in some of that. He's like, don't you know that you are it? Some bad company. Mixing it up a little bit. He's just a, yeah. a late 70s. <laughs> I can't fight this feeling anymore. <laughs> Hot time, summer in the city. <laughs> Songs to warm him up, but also lonely songs. <laughs> oh, man. Lonely songs, yeah. And he goes home to just listen to some Dio. That's yeah. all he's going to do. Rock on, brother. So, yeah, that's denim jacket. Anyway, they see him on the street. They flag him down, and they say, will you buy us booze now? And yeah. he's like, shit, yeah, why not? I'm Billy T. I'll buy anybody anything that fucking goes on here. So he goes into a liquor store. And purchases them at their request two bottles of what do you think? They're teenage uh, girls. What do you think they want? They want vodka. No, almost, uh-huh. almost. Yeah, no, they want Everclear. Want two bottles. Two bottles of Everclear. I don't know if they're big bottles or the small. You know, like a pint. Or, you know, like a flask These girls size. Are That's, in it. <laughs> either way, three, two bottles of Everclear for three young girls is a lot. That's they're a lot. battling. <laughs> That's a lot. Whew, man. So he said, hey, I'm not going to be home. I'm going out. Yeah. I'm I'm fucking Billy. I'm doing things, yeah. obviously. I got a lot going on. Get me some 
some pussy tonight, baby. Yeah, buddy. You know, that's his. You can get somebody to watch me jerk off. <laughs> Man, I'm going to pay a woman to just watch me jerk it. Yeah, that's right. I'll, she'll take her tit out for enough money. So he said, I won't be home, but you girls have the run of the place. Go on yeah. over my house and you can hang out and drink and do whatever. Nobody will be there. So you'll have the run of it. So enjoy. Enjoy. So, yeah, yeah, they're like fucking awesome. Yeah. Teenage girls on a Friday or a Saturday night. Free trailer. With two bottles of Everclear oh, and an open God. house, man. This oh, is like. my stomach hurts ugh. already. But yeah. if you're if you're a teenager, this is like, uh, could it be any better? You know what I mean? <laughs> you rent a couple of movies and you are right up to, what would they be renting right now, you think? In 92? Shit. Uh, you know what? what? Hold yeah. that thought because I'll tell you exactly what they'll be <laughs> renting because I have the top 10 rentals from that time at the end. That's part of our nostalgia trip. Incredible. Movies and music at the end. So All stick right. for that and we'll find out maybe what they were renting that night. So. Um, what do you think, though? I'm gonna get what you uh, guess now. And I'm trying to think of what what was that? It was was Naked Gun 33 and a third out then? I, that, what a weird choice for teenage girls. Why would teenage <laughs> girls want to watch Les, Leslie watched. Nielsen bump into shit? <laughs> <laughs> That's not what teenage girls wanted to watch back then. Was it? A, it was a Corey Feldman, huh? It was a Corey Feldman. Not by then, be, right? No, no Feldman 92? was gone by then. No, ninety two. Oh, that was the end of it all. That was like yeah. dream, a little dream. The bad stuff. <laughs> that was when they were adults playing kids, yeah. and you were like, "Oh, this is creepy." <laughs> Feldman, you're looking creepier by the day, bro. Yeah, you're twenty six, sir. Stop this. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and he started to dress like Michael Jackson, even yeah. in movies. And you're like, this is weird. <laughs> and now he still thinks he is. Oh, yeah, he does. Still. He's like, Mike's Mike's dead. I can do it now. <laughs> no, you can't. Kids now won't even know that I'm uh, imitating him. <laughs> They'll think this true. shit's original. They'll think I made it. Yeah. So anyway, it doesn't matter what they got. So they're um, they're going over there, drinking, doing everything. So they what they do, they go over there and they play a drinking game with uh-huh. Everclear where they just mix it with Pepsi. What? They mix it with, that's all they had, so that's what they no. mixed it with. Everclear oh and Pepsi, God. which I'd sounds- put water in it. That sounds terrible. That's so bad. Oh, God, the taste, it would just- the, Cola it would, gasoline. I'd like Pepsi that could, yeah, exactly. Pepsi that if you lit a match near me, my insides would catch on fire. <laughs> that's what I would like. But make it Pepsi. You know, they, they do a Flamin' Dr. Pepper. We can do Flamin' Pepsi. It's I, literally flaming. Wow. So they played a drinking game with that. Oh, oh my God. Within an hour, Jimmy. They're dead. Within an hour, <laughs> they drank most of the Everclear within an hour. What? We're talking about three teenage girls drank. And they handled it? They, well, uh, Michelle started to feel a little bit sick. And that just yeah. a little sick. Not like, oh my God. and Michelle needed to go to the hospital would have been the thing I would need to right. say. Like, one of yeah. them needs... <laughs> Michelle's in the hospital. The other two are in the morgue. One two are in the morgue, and Michelle threw up, and her pancreas fell out. So we have to, we have to help her. It's, it was in the toilet. We had to soup. We had to get the, we had to get the net from the fish tank and get and grab it. It was crazy. These girls are pickled and seasoned. Holy yeah, shit! They're, that's a lot. So in an hour they did that. Wow. Are you, wow. Are we sure these aren't like airplane bottles? These are like. I, I don't know. I don't. How do you play a drinking game with airplane bottles? How does Everclear? I've only seen in the big seven fifties. I've really? never seen it smaller than that. I was thinking maybe it was because I've seen like the smaller bottles that are kind of shaped like a flask. I think I've seen, seen those. those? Ever, maybe the ones like a Mad Dog twenty twenty yeah, bottle. Yeah, you know, like one of those. Fifth. Well, is yeah. that a fifth? That's not a fifth. No, but I've seen I've the, always I've, considered that a fifth, because I think the maybe, 750 is considered a fifth. That's a I fucking way that. too much. I don't maybe think I've I ever seen, seen anything that. smaller than the 750. Wow. Either way, that's it's, a, it's ever clear. It's yeah. enough to make one sick and the other one's really shit-faced in an hour. Your, so it's, your lawnmower will, will literally run on it. You don't. Yeah. It's yeah. literally flammable. It's combustible shit. If you have a, carbur- uh, a carburetor engine yeah. and yeah. you run out of gas, you could get a jump started with this shit. Pour you can get there. a yeah. you can get it cooking with this. You really can. <laughs> it's unbelievable. It's insane. So that's what they're drinking, mixed with Pepsi. Oh, <laughs> okay. God, Jesus. So um, anyway, they get their friend, a guy named Buck Rowan. Yeah. Enter Buck into the picture. <laughs> Buck. Come on, Buck. You got to be a strapping son of a bitch to pull Buck off. <laughs> it's not out yet. 94. 94, that's right. Tombstone's 94. Yeah. Uh, 92? 92. Jesus. Drop Dead Fred. That. They rented Drop Dead Fred. Because <laughs> that came out in 91. So there Did you go. It? 
I think it did because I saw it in the theater when I moved to Arizona because some girl that I liked wanted to see it. um, Such a good movie. Yeah, and it turned out at the time I didn't like her or the movie, but (laughs) later on I appreciated the movie more. But at the time I decided against both things. So it wasn't good. Thanks a lot. Uh, Drop Dead Fred for ruining Phoebe Cates for being attractive. They they made her the least sexy Phoebe Cates has ever been. I think that's what she was going for. You think so? I think so. I think she was She's like, trying I'm to tired of the fast people, times. <laughs> trying to people pausing and whacking it to my boobs, okay? I'm tired of it. I'm going to have a thing where I play like a different type of character, yeah. I think, like a sweet kind of, because she looked sweet. And she, she was very nice, yeah. But, but that's why people liked her. an average girl, yeah. Because she was girl next door, but sexy, yeah. you know what I mean? So that's why they liked Fast and Times. They, that was like. And then they made that show n- n- the least sexy she's ever been. <laughs> Yeah, which I mean, it would have been really weird to have her looking all sexy with that idiot dun- jumping around her. Because <laughs> he wasn't real sexy, so why the hell does she have to be sexy? I don't have to sex it up if I'm with, around this dipshit, do I? Yeah. No? All right. We can both be ridiculous. Great. Sounds good. It's perfect. I'm sorry. No, I'm, I'm all about Buck it. Owens is here. So, yeah, Buck Owens, Rowan. Buck Rowan yeah. is here. Mm-hmm. Um, you got to be a strapping man to pull off Buck as a name. It Otherwise, yeah. it's yeah. just sad. He said Buck would they would drop uh, Melinda here off and uh, and her friend another young lady here they'll drop them off at the Coastal Mart, okay, which what sounds like a, a gas station is what okay. it sounds like the Coastal yeah. Mart that's open yeah. late that sounds like Coastal Mart in Kansas as if yeah. there's any coast anywhere nearby <laughs> no no it's uh, yeah it's probably some gas company called Coastal but yeah yeah no coast anywhere they imagine the bleakness around this place too it's just yeah. probably. Whew, you know, yeah. Jesus Christ. So the plan is take them to Coastal Mart, then take Michelle to the Scotsman's restaurant and attempt to get some coffee in her. OK. I don't know why they couldn't just get some coffee at the Coastal Mart, the Coastal Mart has a and have it do it in the car rather than drag a drunk 16 year old into a fucking diner and sit her down. What kind of weird <laughs> spectacle is that that you're making? <laughs> You know, like, yeah, I don't know if that's normal around these parts, but I don't, if you get the if you get the coffee at the Coastal Mart, if your stomach hurts and you're driving around with a sick, you know, I mean, a sick oh, yeah, girl, yeah. She, she could throw up coffee all over your car. I guess it's better to throw up in this restaurant. Yeah. They well, have at least porters, sit down and there's no motion sickness. You know what I mean? That's true. That's sit down true. And gather your wits. So the plan is I'm going to get her some coffee. Mm-hmm. Buck's going to get her some coffee. Melinda and her friend, you guys go to the Coastal Mart, and then I'll yeah. meet you guys up at the Coastal Mart at midnight. Okay. So we'll be back with Michelle at midnight. We'll all meet up, and everything's going to be great. So uh, Buck's, Buck said that Michelle was real shit face. She was I really, think, really, yeah. really, like, really drunk. Like, you have to help her oh, boy. to walk her places and shit That's drunk. That's awful. You know, like a young girl who drank Everclear type drunk. Right. Anybody who drank I can't Everclear. drink that. If I drank that, you'd have to help me too. That's what I mean. Yeah. I don't weigh, I, I've seen Michelle. She doesn't weigh more than 120 pounds probably. Jesus. So, I mean, wow. Um, he um, he said that he didn't, they went to the go to the Scotsman's restaurant, but he ended up driving by because mm-hmm. there was a sheriff's car parked outside. Okay. So you're a teenager. You don't want to fucking pull in. With a drunk teenager that you have to carry into the place, right. you're, they're going to come talk to you probably, and then you're going to get in trouble and whatever. How old is Buck? I think he's around their age. Might be okay. a little older, but he's yeah. not in his late thirties at least or forty. He might be you know? seventeen or nineteen, something like that. Yeah, maybe yeah. he graduated last year or whatever mm-hmm. the fuck. But he's he's in the ballpark of a, I guess, somebody that's reasonable for them look, to be hanging yeah, out with. Yeah, it doesn't look bizarre on the surface that he's yeah. surrounded himself with three girls. Yeah, if you're 40 and you drag a 16-year-old drunk girl into a diner, it looks way worse than even if you're their friend. Because then you better pretend that they're your daughter and you just caught her drunk with her friends and she's in big trouble. That's why you better bet. That's right. I found her, God damn it, one of her and her, these damn kids these days. No respect. I'm going to get some coffee in her. Come on, honey. <laughs> I went bowling. I came back to this shit. Jeez, I worked my ass off all goddamn week for this shit. <laughs> this is what I get for it on a Saturday goddamn night, my one goddamn night to relax. Put a roof over your head. <laughs> damn it. I'm going to miss the Kansas football game. This is bullshit. <laughs> Very upset. <laughs> the strongest you got. Keep them coming. Keep them coming. So um, he said that he that Buck drove around looking for Melinda at this point and her friend. They were like, well, where'd they go? Because he dropped them off at the Coastal Mart, but they weren't going to just sit at the Coastal Mart for an hour and a half. They were going to go do whatever and then meet back at midnight. 
So during this whole time he's driving around, Michelle is sick, and now she started throwing up all oh, every. God. She spends most of this time, you know, hanging out the window or whatever. Yeah, so painting the side of the car. And he's trying to find her friends to give her back to them, basically. Yeah. Like, here you go. Here's this throwing up friend of yours. Yeah. You know, no one wants responsibility for the throwing up girl. That's the problem. Right. Yeah. So, um, and, you know, unless you're nice and you don't want him to choke on it and you want to help right. him. So he decided, I don't know where else to go. I can't find these chicks. I am going to. I know they were at billy's house and i know that's where they're all going to end up later because they're going to stay over there because they're drinking so i'm just going to go take her over there now and drop her off at billy's house and she can sleep this off you know and all the other girls will be back in a little while and then they can sleep it off and everybody will be fine i'm just they're whatever so trusting yeah so she is um so drunk that she can't walk to the house herself mm-hmm. okay so um Buck's brother, I guess, is nearby. Some I don't know where the hell Buck's brother came from into this <laughs> scene. Where did run off of Buck happen? I don't know, but he's, yeah. we got we got brother Buck over here now, okay. uh, and he came out of nowhere and helped this guy help Buck carry Michelle into Billy's house. Okay, so she was so wobbly, and especially after puking a whole bunch, you know how that feels. You can't yeah. your yeah. body feels like you've just been. You've had like a, you know, a a giant vacuum stuck in your mouth and every bit of your insides has been sucked out. You feel horrible. So it hurts so bad. (laughs) It hurts. It's bad. So Buck says that they put her on the couch, um, laid her down on the couch, took off her shoes and covered her with a blanket. Like, okay. They put her sideways. Yep. She throws up, it'll be on the ground. The trash can by her face, guys. Um, well, they're kids. They're not thinking. Okay. That. I don't know how old Buck or his brother is, but I don't think they're thinking it through that. Not my fucking carpet, and they walked out. <laughs> not my shag. It's brown anyway. It won't pick up nothing. So that's about that. Um, yeah. They're like, they feel like, done my good Samaritan duty. I've brought her to a safe place and yep. laid her down and uh, even put a blanket over her. We're nice right. guys. Peace out. And uh, they go to leave, okay? So as they go to leave, Buck and Brother Buck, um, this is when Billy pulls up. Uh-huh. Ario Speedwagon blaring out oh, of the yeah. T-tops. You know how it goes. Mm. Um, so Buck tells him, uh, Billy, that Michelle is in your house on the couch. We laid her down on the couch with a blanket in there, just so you know, so you're not like, who the fuck's on my couch when you walk in? He said, well, why the hell did you do that? Yeah. He says, that's, God damn it! you should have put her down in the room on the waterbed. Um, no, you don't. Well, actually, um, because, this is the thing, I read that, I was like, oh, no. Because, he said, I sleep on the damn couch. Oh, I can't sleep on a waterbed, it makes it's me be- woozy. It's better, for, there. it's better for my back, I think, yeah. is the deal. He goes, so I sleep on any uh, 40-year-old man who sleeps on his own couch, by the way, that's a problem also. <laughs> There's so many red flags with this yeah. guy in general. Damn if I'm, I do that a week on purpose, though, no, it's because I fall asleep watching TV. Yeah. I wake up at like 2 a.m. be like, eh, fuck it. <laughs> yeah. No, this guy brings like his bedding out there. He's got like oh, a pillow no. and a blanket set up. This no. is where he sleeps by choice. This isn't no. like I fell asleep and I'm too lazy to go to bed now. He gets this his is by bed choice. pillow and puts it on. Uh, yes. On the couch. On no the couch. Good. Gets like dog hair all over it. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't give a shit. No good. <laughs> it's bad. The whole scene is yeah. is terrifying at this point. So he said, he God damn to, it. He needs to sell that waterbed and get him a Serta. Because those waterbeds, if yeah. that's the problem, it's got to be the problem. Those are I'm awful. sure. That's yeah, the worst. Oh, they support nothing. Nothing. <laughs> nothing. And every you time you move, you're, oh, and you're Jesus. a horseshoe. Yeah. Yeah. Why am I moving still? So he said, you should have put her, but in the 80s, waterbeds were huge. So by 92, there were still remnants of water. They were, that was the popular thing. And then it was, you know, uh, memory foam and spring coils and this one. There's just whatever they come up with that week to sell you a new mattress. (laughs) You have that mattress? Oh, God, you're going to die. You need this new one. We really fucked up making that last one. I had a waterbed. I had a waterbed until I was 18, and that thing had a heater in it. And oh, yeah, yeah, you have to, or else it'll die of hypothermia. Out. Yeah, then the yeah. heater went out, and I then I couldn't sleep under the blankets ever again. <laughs> no, you need to have, like, I because I've had a waterbed yeah. back in the day like that where the heater died, too, and you have yeah. to put, like, four comforters on it. Yeah. Otherwise, the and even then, you wake up, like, pretty chilled. You're like, yeah. there's I just feel, I feel like my body temperature is about 
two right now. That's not right, right? <laughs> it's dropped a little lower than it should be. And the underside of you, whichever side is on the mattress, is ice fucking cold. It's cold. <laughs> like your your joints are sore. Yeah. Like, what happened? <laughs> All stiff and shit. When you're 17, this shouldn't be like yeah. this. <laughs> and you flip over because you're freezing. And, and then, like, your your back like goes away that it doesn't go. Uh, yeah. Not at all. <laughs> just wake up in pain. <laughs> oh, it's so fucking bad. What a terrible invention. It's it really was, man. Yeah. But people it was supposed to be like sexy. Like, come yeah. on, hop on here, and then we both on. Yeah. have like motion sit like And yeah, meanwhile, like, fucking on one of those is damn near impossible. You get no leverage from the knees. No. But I think the theory was yeah. that if you can get a rhythm going, it's almost yeah. like it's almost like a paddle ball game. Yeah. Where you keep surfing. you do it once or twice, but if you yeah. really nail it, bump, 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 you get in the rhythm for a while. I think if you're in the rhythm in a water bed, is what they're trying to sell is the water will keep the rhythm for you. <laughs> yeah. And it'll just the flow of the water will keep you like fucking on bump, 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 bump. Yeah. <laughs> We're like the water will pull her away and you away and then slam you together every fucking <laughs> it becomes like a hydro powered fuck the toy. Does all the work. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you know how it works, right? <laughs> I think that's what they were trying to sell, like a hydro-powered fuck experience, but I don't know. It doesn't work that way. It doesn't really. I don't think that's no. the, how it's going to end up happening in the square, end. Because it's square, not round, and yes. there's no, like, the waves crash into the walls of the bed frame, and it fucks everything up. It's all fucked up, yeah. Just... <laughs> <laughs> and then you're just fucking in a in a cyclone. <laughs> and they all had giant like headboards with shelves yeah. and shit on it. Like yeah, everyone a giant needed mirror in the middle, mirror and shelves yeah. and a, a yeah. slide thing. You put and candles shit. in and shit. Yeah. Why? I don't know. I don't know. Like we'll make it half armoire and half you know, <laughs> hydro powered fuck unit. Why not? Enjoy your enjoy your hutch bed. <laughs> yeah. It's an armoire fuck unit. That's what it is. <laughs> With like padding around the edges of it. It's oh. just, it was awful. They were bad. And if you consider yourself lucky if you're too young to have ever had a water bed. It was bad. Yeah. In the eighties Hydro someone powered fuck machine. <laughs> Hydro powered fuck machine. That's they it's gonna keep its own rhythm. <laughs> Perpetual motion with this water. Which, boom, boom, that boom, was boom, the boom. working title, and then they just went with water bed. <laughs> Guys, that's I don't know. Would you buy that? You know what I mean? It's a little too well, on the nose. Everybody else has this bed and that bed. What if we make yeah. it like just like water bed? What do you think of that? You think the people will go for it? All right, I don't know. Let's try it out. So he's upset because he can't sleep on the couch now because she's there. Mm -hmm. So um, Buck shrugged his shoulders and was like, I don't know, bro. And he left. Like, that was that. Buck doesn't give a shit. Buck just wants out of this situation. He doesn't care. Uh, Buck thinks this was about 2 a.m. when he dropped her off and put her on the couch. That's his general memory. I think it was about 2 a.m. So they drove around for two hours looking for their friends. Jesus Christ. So in the meantime, Melinda and her other friend there... Uh, you know, part of the original trio, right. they've been driving around with two other friends, oh my God. Uh, two boys named uh, Charlie Callahan, which isn't yeah. that isn't so that Irish kid, isn't that one of uh, the isn't that Chris Farley's dad, like Brian Dennehy and Tommy Boy? Is his name Charlie uh, Callahan? Br- I think it was. Br- was it Brian Callahan? Well, his uh, name is Brian Dennehy, so that would I mean, right. That's good. Yeah, uh, fuck. I don't what know. The hell, uh, Did they call him his first name? They I had to, right? He's the brother that like died in a boating accident when they were nine. <laughs> so Chris Farley's going to do it, I guess. <laughs> I'm not sure. And a guy named Josh Wolf, who apparently da- what really? Like, yeah, I don't know if that's that Josh Wolf. <laughs> it's ninety two. It could be him. Is he from Kansas? Uh, I don't know. If he's, he's from Kansas, this could be. While I'm doing this, Jimmy, yeah. look him up and see if he's from Kansas. Quick, if you want. I think we should do that shit. So I would not be surprised if he is because he's, he's he seems... from Kansas. I am going to shit because that could definitely be him. Also, it's a very it's two four letter words, so it could be oh, very he was born in Boston. Never mind. Perfect. Yeah. All right. Different guy. Different guy. There's a yeah. comedian named Josh Wolf. Anyway, so he uh, she's with Josh Wolf, Charlie Callahan, uh, Melinda and her other friend. The four of them are driving around. Michelle's yeah. passed out on the couch still. They say at 1.30 a.m., this would be before Buck says he dropped Michelle off, 1.30 they stop by Billy's house to see if, because there's no cell phone, so right. 
they've literally two carloads of people have been driving around a small town looking for each other and, and have failed. That's yeah. how weird this is. But I mean, and that's a bad plan too. Just like any other time, if you're lost or being looked for, or you're keep, looking for to somebody, keep moving. <laughs> yeah, stand fucking still. Mm-hmm. That's what my parents always told me. If you're ever, if you're ever lost, my grandparents told me. If yeah. you're ever lost in this grocery store, you stand fucking still. <laughs> Don't move. I'll find you. That's the thing. You have to have an agreement of one of the parties is going to stand still. Because yeah. if both yeah. of these car-, car loads stood still, no one's finding anybody either. So <laughs> yeah. someone's got to stand still and someone's got to agree to look and then you can yeah. find somebody. You'll eventually but, pass by them. So, But if my grandparents, if I went shopping with my grandparents at the King Supers, my grandma would go one way, my grandpa would go the other way. I'd go with my grandpa because that man is a fucking hero. And we would... We would just be walking, looking for things, and we would just magically meet up with my grandma. And Eventually I was always like, how did we do this? And he goes, yeah. he goes we've been married for 40 years. <laughs> I know where she is. I, I know are. where she's at. <laughs> <laughs> I know she'll be staring at yogurt for some reason. <laughs> yeah. She does it every time. I know what she's doing. I need to go down the soup aisle, of course. <laughs> <laughs> she's always in that fucking soup yeah. aisle. Cream of some shit. I don't know. <laughs> so they say at 1.30 they stopped by Billy T's house, and no one was home. Yeah, this house is black and empty. Knock on the door. Nobody answers. Oh, well. So then they say um, around 2.30 a.m., they saw Buck again. They ran back into Buck at the Scotsman's, the restaurant, I guess, the the bar lounge. I don't know if it's like a I don't know what the hell it is or maybe like a a food. Yeah. Where we congregate. Maybe their version of Denny's. I don't know what it is. Is Denny a Scottish name? Maybe that's what it turned into Denny's after a while. (laughs) So he then told them about um buck said yeah i left michelle over at billy's house she's over there and the, she was puking all over my goddamn car and everything else so i yeah. i left her over uh billy's house there so melinda and her girlfriend those two the uh, part of the original trio they end up at billy's house mm-hmm. at about three thirty a.m okay and they said no one was there though no one was home couldn't find anybody at 3.30 a.m., which is weird because... An hour and a half ago, we got a drunk girl passed out on the couch. Nobody's here now? Now no one's there. House is huh. empty. They can see the couch. I mean, they've been coming in and out of the house. They have access to it. They can see the couch. She's not on it. So, mm-hmm. weird. That's strange. So, either Buck's got his times way off, yeah. or, I don't know, she disappeared. So, um, yeah, they, they check there. Eventually, the girls go and start riding around with another two boys, uh, Jeff Bevan, and Jason Meslin, there's a lot of teenagers driving around at 3.30 in the morning. Way too many. 3.30 in the morning, like, I, I, I was a teenager. We did a lot of fucked up yeah. shit and crazy shit and parties and everything. 3.30 in the morning, you wouldn't run into tons of people places. No. <laughs> 3.30 in the morning, everybody's on a couch throwing up. Yeah, by then, yeah. the night's over. They're, like, right. in a backyard, hugging a tree, puking. There's yeah. Wherever you're throwing up, you're doing it in private, is what we're saying. So <laughs> These people are on multiple bottles of Everclear, wheeling around town crazy so she's hanging out they're hanging out with another two like we said jason meslin jeff bevan are these people's names uh bevan said he drove them by this house at about by billy t's house at 2 30 but um that can't be true because everybody else he just had his time wrong Mm -hmm. everybody else said that they didn't even get in the car with them until 4 a.m so at 4 a.m they were like cool let's go drive around i can't imagine oh crazy so Anyway, either way, whenever they were there, no one was home. Whether it was 3.30, 4 o'clock, doesn't really matter. No one was there at that moment when they went there. So eventually, Bevan and Meslin dropped off Melinda and the other young lady uh, off at the Coastal Mart again. Mm -hmm. It's like 5 o'clock in the morning now. Two teenage girls standing outside a a truck stop here. This is weird. Something's going to come up. uh, Eventually, the two girls end up somehow making their way back to Billy's house from there because Melinda left her driver's license at Billy's house. The Earlier. questions I have. So many questions. So why they go, is it out? <laughs> <laughs> why, yeah, why is it? Why did you take it out? I don't know. If you, I doubt you left your whole purse there or something. I don't know. Right. Just pass that around the living room? Everybody look at yeah. it? Yeah. I don't think there was lines being cut up or anything. They were just drinking, so I don't understand why your license is out. But she wanted to go get her license, so this has to be, Christ, 5.30 in the morning, maybe. I mean, it's it's yeah. well past 4. I mean, from 4, they stopped by there, left, drove around, did all this shit, and then they end up back. So past 5 oh, o'clock God. in the morning, yeah. um, and no one was there still at the house. Yeah. No Billy, no Michelle, no nobody. So um, they left again after they got their license. What a active night they have. 
Eventually, they call it a night at, I don't know, 7 in the morning. I mean, who the hell knows what time it is? <laughs> this is crazy, right? Yeah. They eventually. Right before their parents woke up. <laughs> man, these, they know how to party. They, I mean, fuck. They, they go harder than I go. Whoa, oh, my God. Jesus, 7 Dear o'clock Lord. in the morning? Are That's, you kidding me? Oh. No, at, thank you. At 4 a.m., I'm never looking for someone else to hang out with. <laughs> Ever. <laughs> yeah. Someone else. It's never happened. So they left again, uh, like we said, and then they returned later on, like we said, like, who knows, 6.37 in the morning. And when they return, they find old Billy T's pickup truck in the driveway now. Oh, he's back. Yeah. Now he's back. Pickup truck there. It's in the front of the house. Not a driveway, but in the front of the house. Yeah. Um, they enter the house. And he, Billy, is sitting in a chair just, you know, right in front of the door, just a chair in the middle of the living room. Now, Melinda said he had a gun cleaning rod in his hand. Huh. You know, those brushes, like a right. big pipe, like a big gun pipe cleaner, basically. There it is. Yeah. That's the best way to describe it. So uh, Billy told Melinda that, quote, some man had brought Michelle to the house and that he, Billy, had told her michelle that she needed to find somewhere else to stay because you know it's one thing you guys want to come over here in a group and party but if you're going to be sick in my house this is crazy i don't want you over here Uh so he said that he went to the bathroom he told her that then he went to the bathroom and when he got out um she the door was closing behind her she was leaving she took his advice okay she took the fuck off she was like Uh oh that was that and so he was like i don't know where she is i just that was all that was the last i saw of her so Melinda and her friend then go out to search for Michelle. Yeah. What? Maybe she's so drunk. Maybe she fell in some bushes somewhere or something. Who she knows? could be in yeah. somebody's front yard sleeping this off. So they walk around on foot until about 8 a.m. looking for her. Wow. They don't find her, though. Uh-huh. Can't find her anywhere. No trail of her. There's not like a vomit trail to follow or anything. Yeah. So they return to Billy's house and fall asleep on his waterbed. <laughs> That's what? it. Yeah, they go down to the waterbed. And uh, when they got back to the house after walking around, he was already passed out on the couch. Uh-huh. So they were like, all right, let's go hit that waterbed. Snuggled on up and fell asleep on the waterbed. Jesus Hopefully God. Michelle went home. That was yeah. that, I guess. So um, he ended up, uh, Billy wakes up at 9 a.m. and drives them home to South Haven, which is a close by town. Mm-hmm. Uh, there they picked up some clean clothes and ended up going back to, with him to his house in Wellington. What? They just stopped by to pick a... So, you have a 16-year-old daughter. Yeah. She went out. Presumably, they said, I'm sleeping at my friend's house tonight or something. I'm sure they... I'm sleeping at your house. You're sleeping at my house. That's how we do it. Crisscross. So, <laughs> that probably happened. And then they stopped by the house on a Sunday morning. At 9 a.m. 9 a.m., with some 40-year-old guy with his pickup truck idling out in the driveway waiting for him, <laughs> where they just run in, grab some clothes, and then get back in the pickup truck with this weirdo and take off. Get the fuck back to your room. No. Yeah. They go in the house. I go out in the front yard with my hands on my hips. Wait, how's it going? <laughs> Be getting the fuck out of here about now, huh? <laughs> Who are you? Who are you? That's a good question. Who the fuck are you? You need something? (laughs) Yeah. Or pull the Deadwood thing. Morning. (laughs) Best time of the day to go fuck yourself. (laughs) Morning. That's my favorite line. (laughs) Best time of the day to go fuck yourself. I'm not sure. You can do anything you want there. So uh, they drove back with him to his house. They ended up staying around his house till about 1030 a.m. They've, They've slept had two like hours two of sleep. Hours. Maybe, <laughs> maybe. They didn't even get back till 9. They He woke them up at 9 a.m. They didn't get back from their walk till 8. So they got less than an hour sleep. Jesus. They took They took like a 45-minute nap to sleep off an Everclear buzz. And, a, you know. And they probably didn't even get to sleep in. You know what I mean? Yeah. Who knows in there what the hell's going on, how you could fall right asleep. So either way, 1030, they get back, and they go right back out to search for Michelle. That's that. Uh, they look around. They even like looked around. You never know. They look at his pickup truck. They're like, oh, maybe, you know, whatever. They don't see anything in there. There's no like blood stains or, mm-hmm. you know, like uh, her purse sitting there, or some shit like that. There's no obvious signs of that. So, you know, you never know. So um, anyway, later on that day, uh, a friend of Billy's, a guy named Scott Rowe. Everybody has four letter last names. Reed, Rowe, Wolf, yeah. fucking all of these people. 
um, Tate. Wasn't though, Buck even, even Michelle? Yeah. Yeah, or Buck was Rowan. That's five. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, f- like, four out of the six characters in this have four-letter last names. That's so weird. <laughs> so, Scott Rowe, he comes in, and he says that Billy came over to his house on Sunday. Now, this is, you know, he he only has a couple hours of sleep, too, for Christ's yeah. sake. So, he comes over about 1 p.m., and they talk about... Um, <laughs> This is amazing. Okay, I don't even. I got. I got to fr- frame this correctly. Okay. He comes over, Billy, to Scott's house, and he's like, "Hey, how's it going?" Scott lives with his mom. His mom's there. Scott's mom, not Billy's mom. Right. Um, that would be really weird. So, shows up about one p.m. They're t- chit chatting for a while. Then he turns, Billy does, to Scott's mother and says, "Hey, Mrs. Rowe, I suppose. Do you know how to get pheasant blood out of a jacket?" What? How specific does a blood need to be? Yeah. Really? Is pheasant blood of a different molecular property than regular blood? Like, it's how specific is that? Slightly more alkaline than deer blood. (laughs) That's what I mean. What's that in an elk or a deer? Or, like, what the hell's the goddamn difference? So, yeah. But very pheasant blood. Immediately, that would be a red flag for me. Yeah. Why would you say that? You know? Yeah. Like, it's so weird. So. He uh, then he and Scott Rowe went to the laundromat Mm -hmm. to wash this based on Scott Rowe's mom's instructions here. Um, They were he said Rowe later on that there were tar like stains on the seat of the truck and newspapers covering up part of the seat of the truck. Oh, so that's different. Now, um, at the laundromat, they washed the uh, the jacket that had the pheasant blood stain on it. And then they went back to uh, Billy's house. And at that point, Billy began talking about Michelle Tate. Okay. And he's like, yeah, these girls, they went out looking for her. And I don't know. She, I don't know where she is still. That's weird. Then he asked Roe, hey, you know, they're just sitting around. And he's like, yeah, there's a 16-year-old girl here. I told her to go home. Now her friends can't find her. That's weird. And they're like, yeah. Billy's, or, you know, t- Roe's like, whatever, you know, let's continue watching the NASCAR or whatever the fuck yeah. they're doing. Couldn't find her, so I went uh, pheasant hunting. I mean, shit, what would you do? <laughs> so then Billy uh, says out of nowhere, hey, Scott, <laughs> um, what do you think would happen if Michelle's never found? Then what? Uh, uh, a weird question to ask, yeah, right? right? What a strange thing to say. So Ro was like, I don't fucking know. What do I know about that? I'm watching, you know, Dale Earnhardt or whatever. So Ro said that over the next couple of days that uh, Billy would often talk about Michelle Tate. Asking him, you know, what would happen if she didn't get found, and what do you, what kind of evidence you think police would look for to try to find her, and stuff like that. Like what? Real weird, non-conversational questions you'd ask. Like real. You know, Roe has not even thought about the fact he no. just helped him clean blood. Not a word about it. Hasn't even thought about it. They, she's just who knows some drunk girl went home and who knows where she went? Some boyfriend or something. What the hell do how, I care? How nice must it be to Ro, to be Roe that he has. Zero no thoughts at all. <laughs> not, not even any. Just I'll go to the laundromat with you, sure. Yeah. No problem. So what a he, dummy. Yeah, he said he all all that shit. Roe also said that Scott uh, or that Billy. I'm sorry, Scott Roe said that Billy uh, he, or he told Billy that the cops would, you know, he said I don't know. They probably have to find a like a murder weapon or some fingerprints or some kind of shit to charge people with it. He said like you know. Basic, I watch TV twice, and I know, like, I don't know, murder weapons, fingerprints, evidence stuff. I don't fucking know. Whatever. Game's threw, on. Threw him an Agatha Christie book and was like, brush yeah. up on you on your own, man. Hey, check this out. It's real good stuff here. <laughs> Carl Malone's playing. <laughs> I'm watching the damn jazz. He said um, I, at one point that Billy said to him, damn, I wish I, wish I would have taken Michelle home. Then, you know, none of this would have happened, and people yeah. wouldn't be worried about her and all this stuff. So then um, later on, though, the police are getting a, a weird tip here. Um, some coyote hunters. What the fuck wants to hunt coyotes, by the way? <laughs> I mean, the people, people, set up, people do it in Arizona a lot. They set out calls to kill them because uh, as a it's nuisance. legal. Yeah, 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 yeah. Not, as a nuisance. Yeah. Not as like, not as like oh, sausage. <laughs> okay, that's what I mean. They're not like going to put it in a dehydrated no. mix of jerky. <laughs> no, I don't think so. This is coyote jerky. It's delicious. <laughs> 
I, so yeah, there, that's a nice jacket. Where'd you get that? Oh, off of Highway 80. <laughs> oh, that's gorgeous, ain't it? <laughs> <laughs> it's a whole pack. Sewed them all together. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, on this day, this is still the same day, Sunday, Daryl Ost, uh, Ostman, Dave yeah. Kelly, and Thane Yunker are three guys coyote hunting out in the country somewhere. Now, they said that they noticed a blue, uh, a blue and white or blue and silver pickup truck backing out of an abandoned farmstead that day. Okay. They were like, that's weird. Um, this Ostman said that he wasn't sure whose truck it was or who was driving. He couldn't tell, but it was a blue and white or blue and silver truck. Uh, Dave Kelly said that he didn't know uh, the driver's name. But, you know, he could he knows the guy from town who it is. Oh, I don't okay. know his name, so, but he's that guy who has that truck. I'd recognize it if I saw it and recognize yeah. the guy if I saw him. All right. I thought I've seen that. <laughs> I've seen that truck around here. Yeah. All right. Yeah. I you no, were no, no, not, the man I, saw the truck once and was like, I don't know his name, but I saw the truck. <laughs> I know. No, yeah. It's, that'd be really awesome if you could do that. <laughs> So Yunker, he said that after Michelle had turned up missing, after that later that day he heard she was yeah. missing, that's when he called the police to report that this truck had been there and we think it's this one guy that was out there. Don't we didn't see like a sixteen year old girl running away from him, so we don't know, but you know, just we're worried. Who knows? It could have been him. We know that they uh we heard that she had last been seen at his house. So okay. Yeah. We saw him pulling out of an abandoned farmstead. Maybe those two and two make four. We don't. We're not sure, but sure puts together well. It's not bad. Yeah. Then another thing happens that day. A rural out here, rural out in the middle of nowhere, out by the farmstead, a woman um, found a bloody nylon vest uh -oh. on a blacktop road uh, in this area. Uh, her name is Debbie Mandeville, and she said that she saw the vest, um, you know, that day. That was, you know, that Sunday. But she said she stopped and picked up the vest. Yeah. Why would you stop on the road to pick up discarded clothing? What the well, fuck are you doing? In case my neighbors is missing one, I just want to be a good neighbor. <laughs> You're in the middle of nowhere. There are no neighbors. <laughs> so she said she picked it up, but she said she dropped it and left it because it was all bloody. Gross. So she's like, she took off. Yeah. I was going to keep it, but that looks like it could be like evidence. I'll just leave that on the side of the road. <laughs> wow. Okay. Perhaps it's the show that we make, but if I ever see bloody clothing like that, I oh. think I might call somebody. <laughs> it's going to be, your day will be ruined, but it yeah. might be for the best. We'll see. Well, I'm going to be inconvenienced for a minute because I don't no think shit. I can just walk away from that. <laughs> Especially since your DNA's on it now. Right. You know now, I've, now I've got fingerprints Fuck. on it at minimum. Now I either have to hide this or turn it in because I touched it. <laughs> now I got to bury it. God damn now, it. If I'm caught digging a hole to bury a bloody nylon vest in the desert, I'm going to prison. They're going to definitely think I did this. I'm fucked. This is not good. Just, just call. <laughs> just call somebody. So she said she dropped it when she saw the blood, though. But then later on, when all the th things came out, mm -hmm. she, she said something. So another person said that, uh, or everybody said that, that's the same type of vest that Reed frequently wore at work. Oh, is what it is. It's the same type of vest. I so guess it's a men's like, vest. A, like a safety vest uh -huh. type of deal. So that's how that goes. Now the police would love to have a chat with Billy just to find out if maybe he knows anything. She, he's the last place that she was. So uh, they talked to him at twelve eighteen a.m. Monday morning. So the oh, whole okay. Sunday goes by. Yeah. And then they get him in there that night at, at 12, 18 a.m. So and this is a lot of times they'll interrogate people when they think they'll be most uncomfortable. Uh -huh. So if Billy's an early riser, they might think this is good because they'll they'll stretch him out. They, they yeah, like yeah. to keep, you know, if someone's a late night person, they try to get him there early in the morning. So mm -hmm. they're not at their best and you're at their your best is how they're mm -hmm. trying to do this. So anyway, they bring him in then. And it's a, a captain, the captain of the police department too, captain wow. Harold Thatcher. He uh, told Billy, uh, quote, you know, I need to talk to you, right? Which Billy immediately responded with about Michelle Tate, <laughs> which is, you know, not good. Either he wants to help or that's yeah. really suspicious. <laughs> so he t tells Captain Thatcher that he, I came home at 2 a.m. and Buck Rowan told me that Michelle was on my couch. He said that Michelle, um, he, t he said, I told Michelle she had to leave. She didn't really want to leave, but I said, look, you got to go. And uh, 
you know, I went to the bathroom, I came back, and she was walking out the door. That was that. And um, he said, I didn't even notice that she was drunk, really. He said, I didn't even, I didn't, didn't seem drunk to me. She woke up and seemed coherent and fine, and I didn't know signs of drunkness or anything like that. Old girl he, was drinking Everclear three hours ago. Apparently, no, he didn't see it. Uh, he told uh, he told that Everclear that he bought for them. Right. And he's talking to a cop. Right, right. And they drank it at his house. So right. all of these That's things add up already. to, yeah. I think she was stone sober, honestly. No, I didn't see any <laughs> alcohol use. Um, also, Billy tells the captain that after Michelle left, he said, I just went, laid on the couch and slept the rest of the night. I don't know shit about anything. So um, after he talked to some other people, this Captain Thatcher goes back to, now he goes to Billy's house at 4.15 uh, p.m. on Tuesday afternoon. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. While he's there... Uh, he notices that there was snow on the ground, and there are, but there's large bare spots of where no snow, like you said, two inches of that icy shit right, snow. Yeah, that's what's on the ground, literally. Mm -hmm. um, but there are two large bare spots near his trash cans. Oh, okay, sitting over there. Um, now he told the cop, Billy tells Thatcher that yeah, on Sunday some son of a bitch stole my goddamn garbage cans. Oh, so on Sunday. When yeah. this girl went, went went missing, some bastard stole his garbage cans, which are so not it, stolen it, very often that everyone on earth just leaves them outside for anybody to take if you wanted to take them. The the least secured item on your property is probably your trash can. <laughs> it's the only thing that you just leave sitting outside completely unguarded by anything and you don't fucking care because it's garbage. Because it's so. just trash. Yeah. What, do you, what are you going to do? Take it? Good. <laughs> Good. That's what I want. I want it to be gone from my house. <laughs> Take I it. usually pay people to do that, so yeah. good. <laughs> I don't care if it's in a truck, in your fucking yeah. trunk, or under your... You can carry it away for all I care. Enjoy. <laughs> so, yeah, there's the trash can thing. Uh, Billy also indicated that his trash barrel also has stolen, but it wasn't even stolen with the can. Somebody stole it Monday. Oh, these bastards like my cans so yeah. much they came back and stole my barrel. <laughs> Unbelievable. Serial theft. Fucking unre it's out of control. I, I blame the druggies walking around downtown. Captain, have you seen all the druggies? So when he asked Billy, the captain here, about the night in question, Billy indicated that, again, I went to bed after Michelle left. I slept all night. Mm -hmm. And uh, when Captain Thatcher told him that Melinda said he that Melinda checked their house that night and he wasn't there when he says he was there. Now, all of a sudden he goes, Oh, that's right. I know why I wasn't there too, because I went over to the town and country. I don't know the restaurant, a diner or something. Yeah. I went over to the town and country for a cup of coffee. And then I came home and went to sleep. They are always out with the coffee. When I'm tired and I'm mm -hmm. in my own house and it's, you know, about bedtime, I like yeah. to go to a restaurant, have a cup of coffee, then come home and go to sleep. That's what I like to do. My nightcap is about uh, 100 milligrams of caffeine. <laughs> yeah. And and getting dressed and getting in my car and going yeah. and sitting and <laughs> sitting there and paying for it and the whole fucking jukebox, the whole thing experience. Then I just come back and go to sleep. That, Very that weird. Really tucker me right out. Yeah, I'm not sure about that. So then Captain the captain told him that Melinda and her friends had come back around 4 a.m. and he still wasn't there. Mm -hmm. He said, you know why? You know why that is? I Now I remember. Uh -huh. So weird. I know it was only 48 hours ago and I thought I slept all night, but actually I was very active. Strange. Uh, but what I did was, I just remembered, is I went out to, I went to the town and country to find a carving knife. That's yeah. why. Yeah. See, I was, I went back out there. Because I wanted to cut up some deer ribs. At so, what time? Middle of the night. You know, two in the morning, <laughs> three in the morning. Um, he said, but I went back. I couldn't find one when I went back there. So I said, ah, fuck it. The deer ribs can wait till tomorrow. It's cold out. And I just went home and went back to sleep. End of story. Okay. So uh, now when the, because he, he'll tell his story and then the captain will tell him why that's not possible why other people have said other things, and then he'll change his story to fit that. <laughs> That's what he does. It's when you have a guilty person in an interrogation, yeah. this is what they do. Oh, well, like here are the liar facts. Would do? Like a liar. Well, let me yeah. change my story to fit those facts. That's what it right. is at that point. So he said that he came back and slept the rest of the night, um, like he said. Um, anyway, uh, 
he said that the girls went to his house. He said he couldn't find a the carving knife, went back and slept the rest of the night. So then Thatcher goes, so this is the third time where you've slept the rest of the night where you haven't slept the rest of the night. Because he said, actually, the girls said they went to your house at 4.45 a.m. and you weren't home. Uh-huh. What's up with that? You where, just where said then? coffee, yeah. deer knife. Yeah. What's up? And he went, oh, you know what? God damn it! I'm bad. I just I, my memory sucks these days. Um, I'm 40, getting old. You know what I mean? You know how it is out there. Everybody, uh, you know, just not as sharp as I was when I was 17. Like these crazy teenagers running around. Right. He says, "Listen, what happened was I couldn't sleep when I came back. I forgot all about. It. I thought I slept all night, but I actually had coffee, got a deer knife, tried to get a deer knife, came home, and then I decided to just go drive around. Yeah. So." <laughs> Out near Oxford. I thought, good, good long drive, I thought. I thought I slept all night, but apparently I was sleep driving. Aimless wander. What's with Kansas, Wellington, and Oxford? How dare you? Yeah, that's a that's on purpose. <laughs> they were like, let's make this shit the new... It's the, the new, new... Newest England. <laughs> oh, baby. It's going to be a, a complete... By the monarchy we're going to have here. So... They said, why'd you just lie four times? Why'd you yeah. just everything I asked you lied about? He said, oh, man... I'll be honest with you. Fine. Now? He said, I, I, yeah, you know how it goes, man. He said, I'm nervous, and I didn't want to tell you the truth because I was nervous because I bought them girls that alcohol, and I thought you were all going to arrest me yeah. for furnishing alcohol to a minor. So I was trying to. That's all? So I lied about a bunch of stuff that had nothing to do with that, obviously, but sounds real murdery. You know how that goes. <laughs> yeah. So I gave you a whole story that's very yeah. suspect. Uh, yeah. Uh, cover up uh, buying booze? Huge suspect story. So then back to Chuck. Remember his buddy Chuck, the yeah. 36-year-old where this all started? Um, they talk to Chuck. Chuck tells the police at least three different stories as well. Chuck? Chuck tells three different stories about what the evening. What are you doing, Chuck? I, 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 I didn't see Billy at all. And then they yeah. said, well, other people saw you with Billy. Well, we went out over here, but I didn't like hang out with him. Oh, well, then he actually, no, we went here and here and we hung out. Oh, we did see those girls, or we didn't see those girls, shit like that. So on Thursday of this week, the police arranged to have Billy's trash picked up. In the trash, they find the front panel of a pair of ladies' blue and white flowered underwear. Oh, no. The front part of one, okay? In addition, they find a 20-ounce Pepsi bottle, which I was surprised. I didn't even think they had the 20-ounce bottles in 92. Must have been brand new. They had that much uh, Everclear, and they only had 20 ounces of Pepsi. Oh, man, imagine. It must have been like take a shot, take a sip type of thing. I bet they were it's doing it. has got to be, yeah. Who knows? Jesus. So that's, that like That's more lends itself to a drinking game, too, because yeah. you're taking swigs. So there's blood on the outside of this bottle. Oh, my. Um, there's also some blue tissues, uh, not like bodily tissues, like a right. blow-your-nose tissue, mm-hmm. with hair fibers on them, okay. the hairs of different kinds. A top fresh brand bread bag that used to contain yeah. a loaf of bread with blood on the outside. They also find a tag from a bra in there. Um, a, they find denim scraps with hair fibers, and they find a two liter bottle of Pepsi with blood on it. Okay. And we don't know how much Pepsi here. And they also find one ponytail tie, okay. which, if there's ever been a in 1992, if any female ever entered your house, you, there's at least six ponytail ties in your house. Yeah. They'd like, like fall out of their pockets as they walked back then. They were everywhere. <laughs> they weren't even in their hair. They just had it no, on their person. On their somewhere. wrist, on a yeah. thing, on a pocket over here. Yeah, scrunchies, too. The, there's... the shirt was tied into a tail with one around mm-hmm. the fucking tail. <laughs> oh, yeah. The right front on the there. hip, that's a, yeah. That's a popular style there. So, um Anyway, the other cops are like, let's check into that farm area where we heard that right. truck. By the way, Billy's truck is silver and blue. So they're well, like, that matches Billy's yeah. truck. So um, they mention all of that. Uh, so they're, they're like, let's, let's go out there here. Um, let's check that out. They walk around the property. It's yeah. just an abandoned farm, so there's not a lot to look at, really. You know, yeah. But you got to look under pieces of uh, plywood over here. you yeah. got to check under that. Uh, you know, a big bush that's overgrown that kind of fell right. over. Check under that. All just, you know, overgrown, abandoned property shit, basically. Right. And rusted pieces of farm equipment that isn't even you, yeah. unrecognizable. Just chunks of steel. Yeah. I, total. And cellars, too. you got to look in yeah. cellars. And they also have a cistern. Do you know what a cistern is? I've heard the word. 
Exactly. I was right there with you. <laughs> I had no idea. So I looked it up. I was hoping maybe I wouldn't How have to read. How fascinating is that? I have gone 41 years in my life. I've heard that word probably half a dozen times, oh, yeah. maybe more, and just moved on by it. Down in the cistern. I'm like, yeah, probably. <laughs> yeah, sounds good to me. I don't know what goes on down there. That doesn't affect my life, that word no. at all. So. <laughs> I just assume problem. it's it's somewhere that's a very small room below ground that has some shit in it. Well, I will read the Wikipedia definition. Okay. Quote, a cistern is a waterproof receptacle for holding liquids, usually raw water. Cisterns are often built to catch and store rainwater. So oh. for farming, so for irrigation yeah. and shit like yeah. that. Cisterns are distinguished from wells by their waterproof linings. It's not just Got a... It stone wall modern cisterns range in capacity from a few liters to thousands of cubic meters effectively forming covered reservoirs so that's what that is yeah so they is underground generally yeah it's down in the ground Mm -hmm. um yeah absolutely so they check the cistern obviously Uh that's where you'd look like i'm warning the same way you'd look uh, at the uh, Hotel Cecil, you'd find that girl floating in the tank up on top yeah Yeah. that's exactly what it is Mm -hmm. exactly so they look in there, and in there they find something horrifying. Oh, no. Um, they find, they don't know if it's Michelle, because it's a headless body floating, is what they find. What? A body with no head they find floating in the cistern. Um, horrifying. Her body, she's nearly totally naked. Um, her jeans are pulled down around to the ankles. Oh, God. A red shirt is looped over one of the wrists. And a white bra is looped over both wrists. So, like, it was coming off and was, you know, caught on her wrists. So they took this, they took the headless body body, out. And then they had to drain the cistern to see what else they would find. And at the bottom of the cistern, they find the head. They find her head. Oh, my God. Yeah, her head was in there, too, man. They found her head. Jesus Christ. At the bottom, it would have been soaking in water and didn't float. Heads apparently don't float. They sink uh, when the rest of you... Rest of you floats. Um, police photographed also at this point tire tracks in the driveway. Uh, mm-hmm. and the tire tracks match the tread on the rear tires of Billy's pickup as well. Which, yeah. as we know, tires on pickups, though, they sell, there's like 8 million trucks with right. the same tires. Yeah. So, yeah. but different certain amounts of wear, there's a way to narrow it down. Sure. There's chunks that get taken out of the tires, make themselves very unique. Uh, yeah, they do. Um, now, the autopsy comes up. This is terrible. Um, Jesus, poor Michelle had been shot, bitten, uh-huh. shot with a twenty two in the head, had been bitten and slashed and stabbed repeatedly with a knife and obviously decapitated as well. Yeah. Were, um, the sl- were the slashes and stabbings, were they life-threatening or were they like uh, yeah, inconsequential? They- no, they were not inconsequential here. Oh, uh, we'll, we'll we'll talk about this. Uh, the guy who performed it, Dr. William Eckert, he said that uh, he found that death had been caused by a twenty two caliber gunshot wound from the back to the left side of the head. Uh, he stated also that Michelle had circulation at the time of the shooting and bled somewhat afterward because she had been stabbed a bunch before that. He concluded that 10 minutes of bleeding would have been sufficient to cause death. He said that there were indications that not only was she stabbed before the initial, before the shooting, but that she still had circulation while she was decapitated. Dear Lord. He cut her head off while she was still alive, Jimmy. Opportunity to survive this and not now. Unbelievable. Of it. Um, Although he said that there's no way to be 100% positive that she was alive at that time, but there are (sighs) indications of circulation. So... She'd been shot in the head and slashed in the throat while she was still alive, and then that happened. Uh, The police chief said, quote, uh, she was not dead when he cut her throat because blood was in the spinal column. We don't know why he cut her head off. It will probably take a psychologist a few weeks to sort that out. Yeah, there you go. That's logical. Yeah. Yeah. The the, the press asked him, why did he cut her head off? How the fuck should I know why someone Uh, cut someone's head off? What a dumb question to ask me. He didn't say... (laughs) Yeah, I don't know. Want to ask him? Hey, (laughs) Billy, what's up with the fucking head cutting? What's up with that, bro? The Gazette's got some questions, Billy. You know what? You guys just go on in there and talk to him. I'll just, I got lunchtime anyway for me. There were also several stab wounds to the neck in addition to the throat slashing. Mm. Um, He could not tell if she had been alive when they were delivered. 
It showed um, she was stabbed three times deeply in the right side of the neck in addition to slashing, shooting, biting, and decapitating this poor young woman. Um, the, and we'll find out exactly what happened, by the way, in a second here. So this, really? is, this won't be a mystery of how this fucking happened. Um, they uh, also determined cuts and scratches, but no defensive injuries as well here. Hmm. Which, yeah, there were no powder burns and no way of telling how far away the gun had been when the shot occurred. So people obviously freaked the shit out in Wellington. They're like, oh, my yeah. God. Yeah. Uh, one person here, Erlene Strickland. Yeah. Sounds like a resident of here. She's tough. She said she runs the shoe fly shop. She says, I I don't know. It's a shop. Shoes or shoe? S H O O, shoe fly. Like, get away from me, fly. Uh, Quote, I've lived here all my life and I've seen tragedies of all kinds. This place is mad fucked up. That would have been great. (laughs) She said, This has to be one of the worst things that's ever happened here. Uh, What could be worse than uh, beheading (laughs) a teenager? Dear Christ, (laughs) Darlene. What have so you how seen? much how much more creative did somebody else get? You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. Holy shit. So um anyway, uh through all of this and the matching of everything and the bloody vest that they then recover and yeah. all of this different shit, they decide to go ahead and arrest him, Billy. Yeah. They arrest him on December eleventh. A search of his pickup truck found a dark tar like stain on the back of the seat. The analysis of the stain indicated that it contained human blood. No of shit. Course. Certain sections of the seat cushion and the truck had been cut away also. Really? There was just missing cut out chunks of seat and seat cushion, which is <laughs> trying to just cut it out of the car. Fuck. <laughs> so ridiculous. Then they searched his residence and they found a jar of Vaseline, which was like new. It, yeah. it had no, no Vaseline had been taken out, but there were 22 caliber shells pushed down into the Vaseline. What? Like, so the, I guess that was his way of hiding them brilliant that they looked in there <laughs> they looked yeah they they looked in there uh now tom reed the yeah. you know the brother, friends yeah. his brother and michelle's friend's Ste- stepfather, yeah, stepfather yeah he said quote we're all devastated my whole family's devastated yeah what it's else do you say though. so what the fuck were chuck and billy doing all night according to chuck chuck's uh-huh. gonna give the word here now chuck flynn here um the buddy who you know, Billy was hanging out with there. He comes to the cops and says that he quote has something he wants to get off his chest. Yeah. Yeah. Um, he says that he, and by the way, he tells like three stories beforehand, but now he's like, I'm going to tell you the real story now. So he said me and, uh, Billy went to a bar in bell plain that night. Uh, we left the bar a little after 10 to go back to Wellington. Mm -hmm. All right. Along the way, we stopped off. Where do you think they stopped? Uh, the town and country. Uh, no, uh, a quote at the side of the road. <laughs> <laughs> no destination, just the side of the road. We just pulled over. Pulled over. Just had a smoke. Sat there. Yeah. Talked about the world. We've done so. That. We have, but that's because we don't. <laughs> these two smoke in this shitty truck. They don't. Yeah, we don't what, smoke in the car when we want to smoke. That's why we did that when we drove several hours. <laughs> To a destination. Yeah, that's yeah. to like South by Southwest or right. L.A. or something. Yeah. Over a three-hour trip, that is. Right. That's like, We're yeah. pulling over. Three hours is like, I don't know, I could probably, let's stretch our legs, have a smoke, you know, that yeah, sort of thing. We're from around here. <laughs> Y'all from around here? What? <laughs> How dare you? Never been so offended. How <laughs> dare you assume I live here? So now, according to what Flynn says, Billy saw a deer at the side of the road. And he, because that's why they stopped, because there was a deer over there. Yeah. So okay. Billy whips out his twenty two rifle from underneath the seat and shoots the deer. Uh huh. It's not how you hunt, by the way. P.S. A twenty two ain't gonna ain't gonna a do deer. it. They're not, not for a deer. A deer. <laughs> no. So apparently it wounded the deer. Yeah. And so Billy, by the way, shot him, then hopped out of the deer, hopped out of the car, and chased after him with a <laughs> fucking Rambo knife in his hand. Caught up to the deer and slit the deer's throat. Okay. Okay. So did a hit on this deer, basically, and then um, let left it left it there to bleed for a while while they went back to Wellington. Not going to take it home now. Jesus Christ. Right. We'll let it bleed out. It's right. cold out. So they arrived in Wellington at 11 p.m., stopped at the town and country store to get gas. At the store, 
they saw, oh, maybe he had it with somebody else. He didn't have it with that. He has a daughter, Billy. Oh, I didn't even realize okay. that. God he has it. a daughter named Stacy who is at the town and country store at 11 p.m. Oh, so he saw her. So he sees her out there. Uh-huh. Then uh, they went to Billy's house to check on whether the three girls that he sent over to go drinking were still at his house drinking. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So uh, no one was there at the house, so they drove back into the country to get the deer. That was the plan. What a night. So then they came back to Wellington and went to the Coastal Mart for a while before heading back to Billy's house. Mm -hmm. So Chuck says that... uh, Chuck and the defendant went into, or later on, he'll be a defendant anyway, uh, into Billy's house, and Billy went inside. According to Chuck, Billy then came back outside. He Listen to this. He goes inside, turns on the stereo, okay? Comes back outside, looks at Chuck and goes, I'm going to go in and turn, that, turn down the stereo. <laughs> it's too loud for my taste. I guess he didn't think it would be as loud as it was on the outside, yeah, maybe? Yeah, I'm not yeah. sure. So this time, uh, Chuck follows him in there and sees, he says, sees Michelle Tate sleeping on the couch right. during this. That's why he turned it down, because she was out so far hard that she didn't even wake up to the music. So Chuck Flynn then says that he went into the bathroom. When he came out, he said he saw Billy leaning over Michelle, quote, fondling her breasts. Oh, God. Gross. Um Apparently, he says Michelle woke up and told Billy to leave her alone. Get off me. Leave her alone. So Billy slapped her. Okay. Now, Chuck says at that point, he went outside. He's like, I don't want to be any part of this. Rather than going, hey. What the fuck are you doing, man? She's a child. There you go. There's a number of different responses to that, none of which are none of my business and go outside. (laughs) You've made this your business. This is your business. (laughs) Now it's your business. That's what I mean. This isn't. This is definitely your business. So Flynn then said that um, that uh, Billy came outside and said that he, quote, Jesus Christ. He said, hey, Chuck, I need your help carrying Michelle to the truck so I could have sex with her in there. Oh, no. What the fuck? So Flynn doesn't go. That's crazy. I'm yeah. going home now. Flynn helps oh, Billy God. put Michelle in the pickup truck. So then they drive out to the country between Wellington and South Haven, the, the three of these people, I guess, one of which is involuntarily going along for the ride. Uh, Flynn says that Michelle was passed out this whole time. I'm sure. She's she's out cold. So they stop the truck in the country. Billy stops the truck. He's driving, turns the lights off. And at that point, he takes Michelle's, he starts trying to take Michelle's top off. Mm-hmm. And he just tells Chuck, I'm going to fuck her now. Uh-huh. Gross. Fucking gross. So Chuck says that uh, also Billy had gotten his rifle from the driver's side of the of the cab up there, and Michelle was coming too, and he told her, uh, Billy told Michelle, be quiet or I'll shoot you. That's what Chuck says. So Chuck says he wanted nothing to do with this situation at I'm all. Sure. Yeah. Obviously. Yeah. I mean, I've, I did carry her here, but you know, now I, now I, my morals are kicking in. So he said that he uh, he wanted nothing to do with it, so he began walking away. Just mm-hmm. to start walking in the middle of the country. Didn't care. According to him, he saw Michelle attempt to get out of the pickup, and he heard uh, Billy say, be quiet or I'll shoot you. Then after that, at some point, not directly after, but in some point of near future, um, he heard a gunshot, and Chuck said he got scared and started running. Oh, geez. Oh, no. Yeah. yeah. Um, he said, quote, I didn't want nothing to do with this, so I got out of the pickup. That's what he said. And then he said um, once he heard the, the gunshot, he heard Michelle scream. Or he heard Michelle scream, then heard a gunshot after okay. the scream. And he said, quote, I got scared and ran to the nearest corner and started walking around to think. I believe zero of this. I believe nothing he said. She was Ex- shot in the back of the head. She wouldn't even know that the shot was coming to scream nope. for. He's Probably a liar. Not. Or if she was trying to get away, I could see that happening. But mm-hmm. I don't see him running away because he's so horrified by the situation. No. That's what I'm not believing. I, I believe, see. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I believe a lot of how it, maybe it went down, but sure. not what he was doing. I think no. he's making himself this just angel who's watching from the outside so horrified. And a good friend yeah. that's just helping out. Just a good pal. He said that after a while, um, he began walking. He was standing around thinking. Then he began walking. He said about 25 minutes later, 
you know, Billy drove up to where he was and asked him if he wanted to ride back to town. Yeah, where like you nothing going, happened. Go my He's, way? Just, yeah, cop on in, buddy. He said Michelle was no longer in the pickup truck, and and Chuck said he noticed no stains in the truck at all. Nothing. Okay. <laughs> so those big stains must have happened another time. Then he said uh, Billy told him that he was going to get rid of the gun and a knife that he had. Okay. Yeah. So Flynn got back in, and Flynn was taken to his home. He said he didn't see Billy again until the next morning when Billy came over to borrow a gas can, which, by the way, he never brought me back to me. So right. he's also kind of a welcher yeah. on his borrowing. <laughs> it's also a thing. So Will you tell me now what really happened? <laughs> <laughs> now, for real? Yeah. Um, he said that he took the gas can because Billy told him that he wanted to go out to the country and burn the insulation off some copper wire. Hmm. Oh, my God. That yeah. is, oof, trash. that's bleak. That's trash. So that's when he took him home. Um, they stopped at the Coastal Mart to get some cigarettes at 1130 or 12 that morning. Anyway, so uh, Flynn also said that he saw him the following Wednesday night. He saw Billy, and Billy informed him that Michelle had come up missing and that they needed to get their story straight. Okay. And he said that uh, Billy told him, I didn't kill Michelle, and he wants to be sure that Flynn will tell everyone that I was with you till 2 a.m., right? Yeah, okay, right. boom, we were with him till 2 a.m. So Billy is charged with murder, mm-hmm. one count of murder, and three counts of furnishing alcohol to minors. Okay. They actually, usually when there's a murder that. charge, they drop like a, <laughs> you know, a light misdemeanor. Yeah, They'll cut yeah. that off. Mix that with murder, it's kind of silly, you know? They're hammering him with these so that uh, at least one's going to stick. <laughs> yeah, murder and shoplifting. How dare you? <laughs> So the defense attorney in his opening statement, he Chuck's going to be the star witness, obviously. So they have to try to discredit him, which I mean, he I don't think he's told the truth yet. I think everything he said is I think that Billy killed her, but I don't think Chuck was as innocent as he said in this whole thing by any stretch of the imagination. I think Billy said, hey, Chuck, this girl's passed out. We can both fuck her. And he's like, cool, man, I'll help you carry her then. Either that or, no, nah, man, that ain't cool, but I ain't yeah. going to tell nobody. Either right. way, Chuck wasn't being a, a hero here at all. So um, they said that the opening for the defense said that Flynn has changed the story, lied to investigators, all this type of shit. Yeah. So the defense attorney says, you will have more questions than answers when this trial is over, including who killed Michelle Tate. Oh. It's a mystery. Well, don't do that in a murder trial. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> What are you well, that's the defense about? attorney. Well, the defense attorney's going to oh, say, yeah, defense wasn't attorney my, say that. All yeah, right. yeah, it's not wasn't the prosecutor. My person. Yeah, the prosecutor. You won't know. I won't know. Hopefully someone will go to jail. It's going to be an adventure. Oh, boy. We're all here for some fun. Here we go. Here we go. So the first picture uh, here, they show pictures, and they he's objecting to all these pictures being put into oh, the exhibits. The scene? Oh, yeah. One picture shows uh, Michelle's head. Oh, no. And shows the wounds to the neck as well. Oh, God. And it shows all of that. The state proffers the photograph to show the wounds to the head and the torso shows that the head is belonging to that body. Because they show the head and the torso and how the head and to- the necks line up. Oh, Look at that. shit. These go together. Um, yeah. They show, uh, another one shows the decapitation itself from almost a top perspective, as well as some drag marks on the shoulder. The state argued that the photograph was relevant to show drag marks as compared to stab wounds because there's stab wounds and then there's drag marks. So we want to show you the difference. And the the photograph, they said, is relevant to show the injuries and the way in which the body was disposed of. And the photograph accurately uh, depicts the injuries to the body and is corroborative of the medical examiner's testimony. They try to introduce testimony from his ex-wife about him saying that he would cut her hands and fingers and head off and shit and all that sort of thing and all the threats but they end up not they said that if he's found guilty that'll be allowed in sentencing okay but not that'll show you know character shit but they can't add that into the trial because he was never convicted for it or anything so and not only that but that's not how the the body had no head but the head was with it still so that's not going to be helpful to your case either i don't think I doubt it either. Absolutely. Uh, They are, by the way, going for not the death penalty or anything. They're going for a hard 40. Huh. Hard 40 means you do 40 before you're up for parole. Okay. So it's a it's a hard 40. That's life, basically. Hard 40 life. Yeah. If you're in your early 40s, you don't want to hear that. 
No, right. hard 40. I just done 40, and that was tough. <laughs> that was tough. I'll do yeah. the rest and then die? Great. And a few years of it, I don't even remember. <laughs> I don't even know a lot of it. Shit, I drink Everclear a lot. <laughs> so they ask Chuck. Chuck tells the whole story I just told you. And uh, on cross-examination, they say, why July, you lie, Chuck? Yeah. Why were you lying the whole time? And Flynn said that, yes, I told three completely different stories to the cops before I told this story, but I did so because I was scared and I didn't want to get into trouble, obviously. Um, so yeah. Um, now during this, during the, uh, when they go to jury, the, the, the defense team here, Billy's team does not request an accomplish, uh, an accomplice instruction Hmm. and contends that the, basically they didn't give a jury instruction that by the way, Chuck is an accomplice. So weigh what he said accordingly. Yeah. But they did say that he was there, but they didn't give the the, the jury can infer if this guy was a scumbag who didn't help this fucking girl yeah. and whatever all they want. But they didn't specifically say he's an accomplice. So weigh his, you know, his information accordingly. So that's one of the things that they're they're fighting here later on. Uh, in closing, uh, the defense says, quote, um, there could be no other reason for dispossession of the body in the manner other than the, uh, other than in an attempt to hide the crime to prevent a lawful arrest or prosecution. I submit to you that one of the factors for you to consider is the defendant com- uh, committed the crime in order to avoid or prevent a lawful arrest or prosecution. Yeah. Obviously, hit her headless body in a fucking well in an abandoned farm. No, James, it was a cistern. A cistern. You're right. You're right. <laughs> it's, there's a lining there. It's a lot different. <laughs> If you were going to, like, say, sell a car, that's right. not where you'd put it to get the no. most visual attention. You know what no. I mean? It's yeah. not, not like a busy street. Clearly trying to get the <laughs> least amount of attention ever. This yeah, is a barn uh, find. It's a barn. Yeah, exactly. This is like a, a 63 Corvette split window <laughs> right? Just found in a barn. In a barn somewhere. Mint. Just <laughs> yeah. some barn dust on it. Uh, so he is found guilty on all charges, Yeah, providing alcohol and murder charges. So sentencing comes around, and like I said, it's a hearing to determine whether the hard 40 should be imposed, or will he be given a possibility of parole after 15 years? Those are the options here at this point. The aggravators are that he committed the crime in an especially heinous, atrocious, or cruel manner, which, holy fuck, you can't get any worse than cutting someone's live head off their shoulders, and that he committed the crime in order to prevent a lawful arrest or prosecution. The jury gets the case very late on a Wednesday, and they don't finish up. They only deliberate for about two hours, and then the next morning they deliberate for another two hours, and then they have a verdict here uh, for the sentencing, and they say, you, sir, may fuck off hard 40, bitch. Is that right? That's right. Yeah, they give him the old hard 40 there. So now Chuck also, Chuck is uh, charged in court with... uh, after this, immediately, he's charged with aggravated kidnapping, aiding a felon, and perjury. That's it? That's what he gets charged with. Um, that's probably, I'm sure they had some kind of non-deal yeah, deal with right, him, yeah. you know, because that, that happened a lot, especially back in the day. So he is freed on $5,000 bond Stop following his arrest. this yeah. shit now. This is prearranged is what this is. This is That man ridiculous. has seen some shit, been a party to some shit, and he's on the street. Absolutely. Now, there's a weird thing that happens before the 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 whole trial and everything that the the family, her family, Michelle Tate's family. I mean, Jesus Christ, I can't imagine what they're going through. This is obviously the worst worst. thing you could go through. They come out and say that that they think that this murder is connected to the Ku Klux Klan is what they say. God damn it. Because she's she's black and uh-huh. Billy's white, uh-huh. um, but and if it was, that would be fucking horrific. Obviously, yeah. we're we're not taking anything away from people who've been murdered by the Klan for any reason. But this has nothing to do with the Klan. No. Like this is this has to do with scum. This has to do with a clan of idiots. A clan of idiots and a guy who couldn't get some broad to jerk him off for three crinkled dollars a day right. before, so he's going to try to rape some fucking teenage girl. What That's what's going to happen. Yeah. Um, apparently she was fighting him off. And from what I understand, they never they couldn't tell if any sexual abuse had actually happened here. Any rape had actually occurred. Don't think that it would think maybe she tried to run away and he shot her in the back of the head is what they're 
Uh, that's assuming. long and the short of it. That's what they're leaving it at. That's what they think it is. So I mean, well, yeah, her that's what they've told down us. Her ankles and her bra yeah. off and her shirts around her wrist. That's that's, that's what I'm saying. I, I don't know if I buy that. that. To you. <laughs> yeah, I'm not saying I. That's that's my and, point too. And the point front too. panel of her yes. underwear are in his trash. Yep, and that was by the, the way at most, trial they they linked that to her as really? well. So that's those the most disgusting so. description of a piece of underwear. The front panel. I've never heard that. I've never heard that either. I hate it. So um, yeah, the the um, they say that Billy Reed is a member of the Klan. Uh, the Klan says that guy's a jerk off. Not one of us. Like we're scumbags, but he's a jerk off and a scumbag. Yeah. It's different. It's yeah. different, is what it is. Uh, you know, he's a different type of scumbag. Right. Um, not that not that he's beneath us. Right. We're all in the same scum cistern <laughs> together, swirling around. Don't get me wrong, but it's boiling down here. It's just a different brand of scum. <laughs> that's all. So uh, the uh, during the funeral, there was a big mess, by the way. During the funeral, the this was the time the Klan was like out a lot because a lot of states had Martin Luther King Day holidays yeah. passed and all that. So they were they were protesting in Colorado, Texas, Arkansas, Florida, Alabama, Illinois, and Ohio the federal Martin Luther King holiday and yeah. the, th- the fact that these states were fine in adopting it, you know, when all that kind of shit. So they were doing that um, anyway. In the appeal, this is the this is his appeal. I won't get into the whole. He appeals on photographs shouldn't have been let in and all that kind of shit that we've had a hundred times, and we understand that that's Chuck allowed. You're so, a monster. Anyway, well, the appeal is that Chuck presented different evidence at trial um, than before. Okay, mm-hmm. that's the that's the thing. Now, in a new statement after the trial, after fucking uh, Billy's trial, Chuck came out with a whole new narrative now what yeah so his appeal here uh billy's appeal is well this new narrative i mean it's totally different so i should get off in the new narrative flynn tells police that when when billy took michelle out to the country and began fondling her michelle woke up and began struggling she called out to chuck for help yeah oh my god and he says chuck says that he told billy to stop and Billy didn't listen, however, continued to try to rape Michelle. And that's when Flynn said, well, this is enough for me. I'm getting out of here. And he got out of the pickup and he said they were still struggling. He said in the course of the struggle, Michelle managed to fall out of the pickup truck. Okay. And according to Flynn, then uh, um, then Billy got out of his truck with the rifle and shot her in the back of the head, then began to stab her in the neck and then cut her head off. Then he ran away. He was there and saw it all, is his let me story ask, now. Yeah, I was there and saw it all. Now, let me ask you this. How is this better for Billy? How would you go into a court and go, see, now that's what happened. How much better is that? So clearly he's lying. If he if all these stories are different, then yep. that, is that what he's trying to say? No, he's trying to say this story shows, A, it affects the credibility of Flynn and everything he said at my trial should be yeah. uh, cut out. And then if you don't cut it out... Um, you know, this also shows that uh, a lack of premeditation, if even if you believe him. So either way, I shouldn't get the hard 40. Either I should be totally innocent or not get the hard 40. The court says, get the fuck out of here, you <laughs> scumbag, piece of shit, lowest gum on the bottom of a goddamn boot, piece of garbage. Go fuck yourself. Yeah. And they send him back there. He also tries to say that the terms heinous, atrocious, and cruel were, quote, unconstitutionally vague. <laughs> vague? Oh, those vague. paint a hell of a picture, sir. <laughs> if I had a list of those words and yeah. the actions that happen on opposite sides of the page, and I said, draw a line from yeah. each of those words that describes what's happening, they'd all go to all of them. All of them. Every person would go, that sounds atrocious, heinous, <laughs> heinous and cruel, Yeah. Perfect. I'd have a um, hard time deciding which word to use. <laughs> that's what I'm saying. Yeah. Uh, he said also he wasn't trying to fucking uh, uh, avoid arrest or prosecution. It's ridiculous. It's affirmed. Yeah. He can eat dicks. Now, during the sentencing or during the uh, even though there was a, an affirmation here, there was two dissenting judges here that thought oh. that he should get his sentence thrown out and thought he should get less. Wow. Uh, yeah. They say that. uh 
blah, blah, blah. Uh, the defendant avoided or prevented arrest or prosecution for what crime by murdering her? Furnishing a, a liquor to a minor? There is no evidence, let alone beyond a reasonable doubt, that he murdered Michelle to avoid or prevent arrest or prosecution or for, uh, for any other crime. I think it was because he was trying to rape a 16-year-old, and he didn't want her to get tell her friend who then told his fucking brother, who's the kid's stepfather, and then you got, you know what I'm saying? He's going to yeah. be in jail. That's who what I think. the two that were dissenting, and what the fuck have you two done in your lives? Because what no are you shit. talking about? He said, obviously his actions following the murder were to prevent arrest and prosecution for the murder, but that's not tantamount to committing the murder for the purpose of avoiding or preventing arrest or prosecution for some other crime. Yeah, That's what he's saying, which is the the drinking, I guess they're saying there. That's why they charged him with that. Um, The majority, meaning the judges that were in favor of affirming this uh, decision, responds to his argument by relating his alleged sexual acts against her. The majority then states his actions, if concealment of the body had been successful, would have avoided or prevented a lawful arrest or prosecution for kidnapping or attempted rape. Yeah. There you go. And that's what, because he's not being charged with rape, that's what they're saying, is that there's no, what, he's going to murder somebody to cover up drinking? Uh, That doesn't seem logical. But that's not. Attempted rape of a 16-year-old. We only got him with the drinking because we can prove that. We can't prove that he was fucking her, but we have a friend that was saying he was trying to. Yeah, fucking obviously. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, they say, quote, I, on- I also dissent from the majority's holding that the instruction requiring the jury to unanimously agree on either a hard 40 sentence or a life sentence without parole eligibility after 15 years was not clearly erroneous. Uh, to conclude, there's no real possibility the jury would have reached a different verdict, ignores the reality of effect of such instruction has on jurors and the dynamics of jury deliberation. Further, the ju- the verdict form perpetuated that error. That's the form they have to fill yeah. out, which if you watch the Johnny Depp trial, the jury had a question about that yeah. right there. I'm just trying to liken it to something anybody might have seen. The lesser sentence of life uh, with parole eligibility after 15 years is not an alternative sentence for the jury to decide. It's the alternative sentence the court imposes if the jury fails to find the existence of an aggravating circumstance, blah, 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 legal, legal, legal. Okay, so... Fuck him. He's in jail. Yep. He's there for, you know what? To, you know what this year is, right? <gasps> forty years. Forty. Is it? No, it's thirty. It's forty. No, it's no, thirty. It's thirty. 30. Thank God. We it's still 30. got ten. Yeah. we still got ten, 10 more together. years, Billy. <laughs> Suck a dick. So Billy's there. Poor Michelle and her family. I feel terrible. That's fucking terrible way to the lose worst, your man. daughter. She just wanted to go. What sixteen year old doesn't want to go drink with their friends sometimes? Right. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. and in ninety, you shouldn't come home without a head. So common. Oh yeah, Jesus Christ, nobody. We all did it. So um, that said, let's find out while this was going on, the arrest and the trial. Let's yeah. find out what the t- on March 12th, 1993. Real quick. Let's f- what happened to Chuck? Chuck, uh, Chuck ended up, I, I think, got a suspended sentence or two years or three years what? or some shit like that. Yeah. Chuck got a very low sentence. Uh, I couldn't find. They just kept saying he went to jail, but I couldn't yeah. find exactly what the fuck they ended because nobody cared about him. He probably he was went like to a jail, side, not prison. No. He got yeah. like six months or some shit. That's it. Wow. So uh, that said, we'll pick up where we were earlier. March yeah. 12th, 1993. <laughs> okay. We'll find out what the top 10 uh, box office movies are at that okay. time the and theater. the top 10 rentals. All right. <laughs> and I also got the top 10 singles and top five albums in case oh, you want to know as well. God, it's so bad. Top 10 box office films. Uh-huh. Number one, out for two weeks at this point, Falling Down with Michael Douglas. Wow, where, I never uh, saw it. You never saw it where he no. acts very crazy um, and does, yeah. acts, runs amok in the city. Anyway, uh, Groundhog Day, number two, a classic. Wow. Out for four weeks at that point. Um, out for 15 weeks, and number three is The Crying Game. Is that which right? Won Academy Awards there, mm-hmm. that's why. Homeward Bound, number four. <laughs> really? The cartoon, yeah. No, that's uh, a, a live action. Oh, but, you're right. That's yeah. a live action. I just thought of Fievel <laughs> Goes a, West in no, my head and Homer Bound. The, yeah. the, the, you're right. The yellow lab and the... and the. You're totally is, right. Is it a cat that's with him? A tatty? I think it's a cat. I think yeah. it's a cat. Yeah. Uh, next up, Mad Dog and Glory, which isn't about dogs, actually. No, that's uh, sure it's an not. action movie, I think. Amos and Andrew is number six. Amos and Andrew. Amos and Andrew, number six. Number seven, Best of the Best 2. Oh, my God, really? Yeah, they made a two of that. Holy balls. I think that was better, actually. 
<laughs> it's not easy or not hard to do to beat best of the best one. Yeah. Eight overall, Summersby. Uh-huh. That sounds boring. I never saw that. Never and number nine, Aladdin, because it's been out for 17 oh. weeks and it's already wow. made $200 million, so it's doing well. <laughs> Still in the top 10. Yeah. And then number 10, Swing Kids. Never heard which of it. Which barely made any money. The rentals, top 10 rentals. Here yeah. we go. Uh, single white female, number one. Wow. Five weeks in release and still number one in the uh, rental market. That was a big movie. Number two, A League of Their Own. Uh-huh. Terrific. Uh, number three, Unlawful Entry, which I believe is a Steven Seagal movie. <laughs> Probably. I think it is. Number four, Death Becomes Her. Oh! Jesus. This is all. I had a, this is amazing that they're in the top three. I had a video tape, you know, like a VHS tape, yeah. and you could do the long play, yeah. super long play, and it would be six hours. I had a tape, and I used to tape my the illegal cable boxes. My right. aunt had that, and I used to go tape a bunch of movies on pay-per-views at her house. I had a one tape that had A League of Their Own, Honeymoon in Vegas, and Death Becomes Her on it. <laughs> That's hilarious that they're all three are in this thing. They're all on there. That's Nick Cage, Honeymoon in Vegas? That's Nick yeah. Cage, yeah. yeah. What am I going to do? End up in airport jail? <laughs> um, arrest me? Put me in airport jail? <laughs> Number six is Raising Kane, which is John Lithgow, I believe, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. Uh, number seven is Sneakers, which is oh. a is that Kevin Bacon. It is, yeah. I thought so. Number eight, Mo Money with oh. the Wayans Brothers. Yeah. I saw that in the theater when <laughs> I was a kid, movie. boy. Number nine, Boomerang with Eddie Murphy. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> yeah, hey, so look takes a look. Then number ten, House Sitter, which we discussed a few <laughs> weeks ago with Steve Martin and Goldie Hawn. Out twelve weeks. That is a great list of movies. I'd That's watch. I'd watch all, the, all seven that I've seen. I'd watch them again. Oh yeah, yeah. I've seen pretty much all of those. And uh, top ten pop singles, by the way. Oh, number God. one and number this. It's been on the list for four weeks, at no, and it's still number one. Informer snow. <laughs> I was gonna ask you. Really? Is it snow? Followed by Dr. Dre with nothing wow. but a G thing. So hip hop was up there, but they were like, no, snow's much better. And they were both, <laughs> by the way, on the chart on the chart for the same amount of time. Wow. And that Informer is, was crushing him. They just chose snow over Dr. Dre. <laughs> uh Silk with Freak Me after yeah. that. Hell yeah. We got uh, a whole new world with Peebo Bryson and Regina Bell. It's from Aladdin. Uh, Aladdin. Yeah. Whole mm-hmm. new. Uh, I'm every woman. Whitney Houston. <laughs> I'm every woman. All right. It's all uh, in me. Duran Duran. Ordinary world. Wow. How about that? They hung it's around till '93. Ordinary huh? world. It was a boring song. Do remember that song? It sucked. Uh, Jade. Don't walk away. Hell I don't yeah. know what that is. Arrested Development. Mr. Wendell. <laughs> Mr. Wendell. What number was that? Six? Number eight. Mm-hmm. Uh, been out for seven weeks already. Yeah. Whitney Houston, number nine, I Have Nothing. God, she crushed. Okay. And then number 10, rounding it out, Bon Jovi with Bed of Roses. <laughs> I'm a bed of roses. I'm gonna I'm lay go. you down. <laughs> I'm a bed of roses. <laughs> <laughs> that was such a bad album. <laughs> That is bad that shit That was the right end there. of it for them. <laughs> There's a lot of shit in that top ten. Yeah. <laughs> a lot of shit. And then the top five albums out uh-huh. at the time, because that's totally different than the Snow? top five. <laughs> yeah. No, actually, oh. shockingly enough. Uh, number one, Eric Clapton Unplugged. Oh, yeah. Remember that? 19 yeah. weeks on the fucking charts, still is number one. Right. And he's number a cunt. T- Oh, God, yeah. He's number two. Number two, 15 weeks on the chart, the Bodyguard soundtrack. <laughs> Whitney Houston. I will always love you. That's going to be huge. Number three, Jesus Christ, really? 15 weeks on the chart, Kenny G, Breathless. Number three. I've Number never three, heard more than white two. White people s- bought a lot of albums. Yeah, Eric did. Clapton, yeah. Bodyguard soundtrack, Kenny G. That is Jesus Christ. 40 year old white ladies are buying yeah. all three of those. Uh, number four, Naughty by Nature. Hell is yeah. on there. Yeah. <laughs> 19 Naughty yeah. 3. Uh, and then finally, number five on the chart for eight weeks, Dr. Dre the Chronic. So there yes, you go. Sir. There you Not go. Not too shabby there. And uh, wow. there you go. That is mind blowing. And what a revisit. I remember Snow yeah. being enormous, though. <laughs> oh, so big. You know, I had to do that not only because we were curious and I wanted to save us from talking about 1992 for five minutes at the yeah. top of the show, but on top of that, it was just a 
fucking gross way to go and i just yeah. felt terrible and i'm like yeah. we all need like a palate cleanser cleansing. yeah and so we're going to talk about snow and former <laughs> and that's going to cleanse it all i think what's that guy i he must have made a shitload of money from that because you never heard from him again obviously um that doesn't mean he's not like mopping no. a target somewhere <laughs> <laughs> that was the most insulting music <laughs> ever <laughs> some white guys in with a jamaican accent <laughs> that was really 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 really, really embarrassing next to eric clapton's i shot the sheriff it might have really <laughs> <laughs> with white guys impersonating yeah. <laughs> island folk. Um, yeah, that was bad shit. It was really bad, and I can't believe it was that fucking popular. That's <laughs> mind-boggling. Thanks, MTV. <laughs> Nothing but a G thing. That was on every five seconds, yeah. too, but they bought snow instead. Right. Who the fuck did that? <laughs> what are you thinking, people? You know what it is? It's because they could play that around their kids, because you can't play... I mean, yeah, they don't even know what he's saying. Right. What the fuck is he talking about? Who, Who cares? cares? It's garbage anyway. The chorus. Yeah, really. Like you've yeah, that's true. Down. Yeah, I think different people were buying those, I guess, I yeah. suppose. Yeah, yeah. That was like people who didn't know anything about hip hop were like, I like this guy. He's, right. you know, like yeah. like a 12-year-old's first hip hop CD would yep. have been Snow, you know, like some... Snow and Vanilla Ice. <laughs> Oh, God. Oh, that's true, too. They just needed another Vanilla Ice. They were yeah. like, where? We need another one. God damn it. <laughs> this guy's not as handsome, but he'll do. And then they wonder why when Eminem came around, people were like, we don't need any more. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Got enough. You're going to have to fight your way in because snow and Vanilla Ice have really fucking greased the tracks for you. You're going right off the <laughs> right off the rails, sir. <laughs> so anyway, that is Wellington, Kansas and mm. a crazy story in 1992/93 slash in a nutshell and Jesus poor, Mich- poor Michelle Tate. I mm. feel bad. I also feel bad for Melinda because they just did what all the teenagers do. Right. She didn't fucking have any idea that that was going to turn out bad. It was stuff they probably did all the time, hanging out, drinking and to just to have your friend die from that, and it's somebody that you know they know through you, and right. you brought her there yeah. and left her there, like that likely shattered I that feel, poor girl's life forever. Oh, I mean, obviously, I feel like, horrible. It changed everything sure she, she does. does. She doesn't do that anymore. I'm sure she's got to feel, fu- or she does nothing but that. Either right. one, you know, yeah. like who knows? We, I just feel terrible. I hope she like uh, got better over that because it's not her fault at all. You know, <laughs> obviously, it's not her fault, but. That's something that someone would feel a lot of guilt over, I imagine. A half-decent person would feel guilty about Mm -hmm. that. So there you go. So anyway, that's the episode. If you liked it, tell the world about it. Get on whatever app you are listening to and give us five stars. It is important for some reason. Helps drive us up the show. So please do that. Also, uh, follow us on social What I say? He said, "Helps drive us up the show." Up the show. Right helps up drive the us show. up the show, everybody. Wow, I'm tired. Helps drive us up the charts. Help, helps is. drive the show up the charts. Thank yeah. you. <laughs> and helps drive this up my ass. That's what's going on here. So, uh, also follow us on social media. We are at Murder Small on Twitter, at Small Town Pod on Facebook, at Small Town Murder on Instagram, and you can follow us at any of those places and find out all the newest shit that's going to happen and yeah. tour dates and uh those boxes that sarah is making up a new box everybody watch out for hey, that there's boxes coming send where we you our box bunch are gonna show you our boxes what do you think of that <laughs> open up my box i'm gonna open up my box wide for you how's that <laughs> so get out come and eat our box everybody i don't know if there's food in there so maybe you can't eat it maybe you just can just uh, box that's just fine. caress just caress our box <laughs> just put your hand in there finger around a little bit and see what's in there you know Use your fingers and finger our boxes, everybody. No big deal. There's some surprises in there. Yeah, you got to. You need to use your fingers to get under them. That's you got to finger get deep your box in my yeah. box to get everything out. <laughs> deep in my box, but nowhere to touch too. Don't just jam your fingers in my box. You're gonna. You won't find that everything. You're you got to know walls. where you're looking. You got to know where you're looking. Yeah, you want to keep the box all together. So be very careful. Check that out and uh, do that. Also, uh, follow us or head to the website. Shut up and give me murder dot com is where you get all of your merchandise. Murder bird shirts are up. All this crazy shit. We have so much cool stuff. Get it on there. You, you want to do you want a murder bird skateboard? You can we get got, one on yeah. there. You want a coffee mug that says you, sir, may fuck off. No problem. We got it covered. We got gotcha. you. 
got you covered. So get on there and do that. And uh, you can also buy tickets to live shows on there, yes. especially coming up. Well, we'll tell the two that are were have tickets left that are you know really out there is uh, New Orleans in July. Get your tickets to that. Um, and then the Pabst in Milwaukee. Yeah, that uh, you know, plenty of people buying tickets, but that is an enormous theater. It's, it's huge. Yeah, it will. It's the biggest venue we've ever had. Right. So this, if you sell out this venue, will be the biggest show we've ever fucking had. Sure. So yeah. let's do it, Milwaukee. People like from Chicago too. It's going to be a different show than we did at the Chicago live show. Mm-hmm. So check that out. Drive up there. It's like an hour and 20 minutes. Who gives a shit? Come up and see us up there. Let's pack this son of a bitch out and make it the fucking best show ever. And then we'll talk about how amazing Milwaukee is for the rest (laughs) of our goddamn lives. People of Madison, come on through. Tell your college friends. Come over. Do it up and uh, see us there. That's shutupandgivememurder.com is where you get all of that. Patreon.com slash crime and sports is where you get a bunch of other great stuff. All of your bonus material is going to be there, and we have a ton of it. You're going to get the whole back catalog. It's like yeah. 150 plus episodes, and you're going to get access to not only crime and sp- or not only small town murders, but crime and sports bonus right. as well. Anything we put out bonus, you will get. This week, you're going to get two episodes, like you do every other week, mm-hmm. and this week you're going to get for crime and sports. Don't have to like sports. This is just a crazy story. A major league player. Pitcher goes out, throws a no hitter while absolutely tripping his balls off on acid. Have you barely done drugs? Rem- <laughs> have you ever played seeing, in a major league game at the same time? Seeing trails, not knowing where the catcher is. <laughs> the story's incredible, and we'll tell you all about it. And then for small town murders bonus, we're going to talk about lots of weird shit that came out of John Wayne Gacy's face. Uh, words, we mean. We're going to talk about conversations with a killer, the John Wayne Gacy tapes, and then even more. I'm going to get a little deeper on his own words because, uh, you know, that that documentary is fine, but it doesn't do it justice. Like the guys like John Wayne Gacy's lawyer, the Amarante guy, his book. I mean, it's just long quotes of Gacy shit that he had to write down for his lawyers. He has access to all the shit, so he knows exactly what happened. We'll talk about all of that. Patreon.com slash Crime and Sports is where you get all of that. And that's for anybody $5 or above. You get access to everything. And you're going to get, what? A shout-out. You bet. A shout-out. So, Jimmy, I think it's time for those now. Hit me with the names of the people who would never, ever, ever leave us in a what we found out to be a cistern. Ever and in a million years, hit me with those names. This week's executive producers are Jordan Bennett and Melissa Turner, who drove all the way from New Hampshire to Philly to see our show this weekend. Mm. Thank you so much, Melissa. Thank you so much. Her, her dog's a mess, so she had to bring her pup with her because the pup is oh, like, wow. yeah, she's not doing great. Or he, that I don't sucks. know. The pup is sick. So she had to bring the pup with her to be in the hotel, and uh, wow. really appreciate you making that effort, Melissa. Thank you. A, what, a, what a couple of... Great shows. Those were fun. Yeah, good times. Uh, other producers this week are Centeno Kennels in Canada, uh, Liz Vasquez, Jake Ant Oniony. It's a that's a Italian name, and onion is right in the middle. That's what I see. Uh, Peyton Meadows. Uh, <laughs> what is it? Never mind. Ant Oniony. <laughs> Aunt Oniony, yeah. Yeah, that's what it is. My aunt, my aunt Oniony. She's a <laughs> she smells like shit. I'm telling you, my aunt Oniony. I don't like her. Peyton Meadows is thrilled about summer. Her buns are out. Uh, Bella hey. and Owen Beaumont. Uh, your dad said hello. Phil McCunt. Proud of yourself. Uh, <laughs> Nicole nice. Stacy's Shingles. I hope sure. those go away soon. Uh, Kayla Streeter. Janice Hill. Champion of the Sun. <laughs> what is that, James? Do you know who that, that is? is? That is Always Sunny. That is the day man. That's who that is. <laughs> always Sunny, bitches. Yeah. Boyd McComish. Uh, uh, <laughs> Chuck Terry's old crusty birthday. Happy birthday, Chuck Terry. Uh, Steve Schnell, we missed baby. him in Philly. Hey. I'm so upset about it. Oh, shit. I miss yeah, you man, the most. Uh, Brendan oh, yeah. Abels, Ashley Stewart gave Kara her live show tickets and refused payment. So thank you, wow. Ashley. That was That's sweet really of you. Nice. Uh, Michelle Wandy, Tammy with no last name, Jared Stemmen, uh, Grumpy Chicken Farm, Michael Ratinsky, I think, Evan Miller, Stephen Windles, Christian Entz, Christopher Soley, Carolyn Gurgle, Jesus, uh, Rob Colini- Colino. Crystal, Crystal Hilliard, Shane Flurry, Anna Marie, Brandon Samarco, Robin Long, Andrew Thomas, Thompson, fuck, Scott Voles, Carrie Renswick, Priscilla Graff, Oscar R- Rodriguez, Angel Lozano, Me Too, uh, Cassie with no last name, Ellen Mitchell, uh, Athena, Athena Montgomery, uh, Chris with no last name, Gabriella French, Katie Donahoe, a- a- Angie, Angie D- uh, Doragati. 
Jeremy yeah. Gamble, uh, yeah. Kate, Caitlin McLaughlin, Faith Hook. Nope, that's Cook. Uh, Daniel Sam, Catherine LaFaro, Lo Faro, uh, Paige Snyder, Wendy Horn, Charlotte Savage, Gavin Price, Jennifer Edwards, Renee Wapsuck, Paul Winnie. Uh, she donated twice, so I imagine she needed another uh, Patreon uh, for somebody else. Brent was Heilman. That, was the word Wapsuck in there? Was yeah, that something Wapsuck. I heard? Wapsuck. Wapsuck. You heard, Renee you were Wapsuck. Like, Wapsuck. I was like, really? That's your middle I, name? <laughs> Fuck those I think guineas. it's a right. hyphenated last name. <laughs> I believe so. Brent Heilman. That's not a good last name either. That's tough. No. Uh, Todd Wurtenberger. Casual Nazi Heil, man. Come on, bro. <laughs> Come on, man. Heil. Ben von Groningen. I don't know. Yeah. Casey with no last name. Angus 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 C. Bell Smith. Tori. Swiaki, uh, Ainsley Harvey, Angela McColl, Jolly Tomato, Austin Painter, Alicia Larson, Tyler with no last name, Alexandria Ramage, Ramage, uh, Ramage, pa- uh, Pamela Harvard, <laughs> Kyle Thacker, uh, Susie Q, Michael Con- Conway, Luke with no last name, Flappy Beaver, doubt it, uh, CTM <laughs> BR, <laughs> Christina Paxton, Karen Mitchell, Kathy Mancall, Mancall, uh, Mancall. Amanda Goss, Aaron uh, Eith, uh, Altenhoff Long, Allison Carmichael, Carmichael maybe, I'm not sure, Devin Baumgartner, Lisa Ferguson, William Brakefield IV, Vincent B- DeBono, uh, Marianne Dayton, Claire Muley, Mully, Dylan Sessions, Samantha Spriggs, Michael O'Brien, M. Foxhill, Hunter Comer, Jab Arts, Melissa Ward, Lakeisha January, Michael Cartinis, Cartinis, Cartinus, Justin Reed, Cindy Something Brown, like Heather Armstrong, Joe Salerno. Is that the name of that fucking investigator? Was it Joe Salerno? I think it was, yeah, was. Salerno. I'm sure it's yeah. not the same Frank, guy. Frank Salerno. Frank, Frank Salerno. Salerno. Maybe it's Frank. Maybe Joe's kid. Charissa oh. Nelson. Carissa Nelson. Keely Folger, Stephanie O'Hara, uh, Corey Coulter, Joe Gardner. Yeah. Uh, Alan, Alan Brennan. Kathy with no last name. Grant with no last name. Ben Spicer. Michaela Brown. Joe Terecker. Terechik. Uh, uh, Romeo Romeo Chapa uh, Matthew Roland oh, yeah. Amanda Harper Bethany King Jazjit Core Jasset uh, I'm never gonna <laughs> learn that one ever it's not gonna happen <laughs> Probably not the Jeremy so. Sermon Seaman oh boy Sassy McSassy Pants Pamela Vongasia uh, Liz V Fr- uh, Richard French Noel with no last name Todd with no last name Abigail Barbier uh, Court Kurt Marcotte Ca- Capri Capri, uh, Catherine uh, Shut, Tyler Draper, B- Bill Bibbity. What is this? Blibbity, Blibbity, blah blah. Uh, Josh, Van- blah. <laughs> Josh, Josh Van Gordon, Danae Andrews, Miss Slocum's Pussy. Oh boy, uh, Lexi, oh. Lexi White. <laughs> I don't know what. Appreciate that's that. <laughs> uh, uh, Amanda, Amanda Helton, Emily Fredericks, and Luke Caterberg. Liz with no last name. Jason Wyland, uh, Dylan B- Benitez, K- uh, Nathan with no last name. Melissa Carter, Paul Bedford, Zoe Graham, Abby Hayes, uh, Daniel Archer, Kristen Turner, Caitlin A. Ree. Uh, what? Uh, David Baker, Rick Wood, Eliza Sconce Sidersky. Uh, Courtney, <laughs> Courtney Bremer, Kira, and Amy Peach, 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 or and you know, and all of our patrons, you guys are amazing. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, everybody, mm. for everything you do for us. We really do appreciate it more than you can imagine. I, we, we try to tell you, but I, I don't know. We're bad at expressing shit, and uh, yeah, and, and I it's, go to thank therapy you. Just a lot thank to, you to try to process the gratitude as well as my grief. And uh, you guys are doing <laughs> tremendous for us. Thank you so much. Thank you. Truly. And uh, if you uh, want to follow us as well on social media individually, you can do that very easily by going to shutupandgivememurder.com. Oh, There's yeah. links to it all right there. Or you can just Google search Small Town Murder Podcast hosts, and it better fucking be us that pops up. <laughs> that said, thank you so much for coming and sitting through a disgusting story. Hopefully we made it palatable. And, uh, you know, until next week, everybody, it's been our pleasure. Bye.
If you like our show, please give us a five-star rating and a review. Episodes of Small Town Murder are available free wherever you get your podcasts. If you want to hear new episodes one week early, you can download Amazon Music. Or if you want to hear new episodes early and ad-free, you can subscribe to Wondery Plus in Apple Podcasts or the Wondery app. Another way you can support our show is by filling out a survey at wondery.com slash survey. 